And we say good evening to you from Central Catholic High School in Toledo, Ohio. It is the regional quarterfinals tonight in Division Three, Region 10, as the Defiance Bulldogs are on the road to take on the top-ranked Central Catholic Fodding Irish. Welcome to our Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show. My name is Josh Bush alongside Brent Routon, perched high above uh, Gallagher Stadium here at Central Catholic. And, well, Brent, uh, a Friday night here. Uh, you can see uh, this is uh, quite the atmosphere up here at Central Catholic High School. It is. It's a very unique atmosphere with kind of where we're dropped right down in the middle of town. But they got a, the school here. The field looks great. They've got tailgating. Well, I hope so. It's, yeah. it's turf. It's turf. Well, it's you know, in good it looks shape. great. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> they got tailgating going on out here. You know, they, you see it in high schools. They seem to do it right, though, out here. So, um, yeah, no, definitely a great setup and fun to be moving on to week two of the playoffs. And we're going to have a game for us tonight. Well, a uh, tough task for the Bulldogs tonight. Uh, Top-ranked Central Catholic who has uh, kind of run through opponents throughout the season. Actually, throughout the last several seasons, uh, I believe their 20th consecutive playoff <laughs> appearance under their head coach, yeah. Greg Dempsey. And uh, uh, this is a team that uh, clicks on all cylinders. And uh, the Bulldogs are going to have to be top-notch A game tonight. Yeah, it's one of those games where you come in and you look at the opponent and then on paper it looks tough. But that you don't play it on paper, you have to get out there and make those plays, complete the passes, move the chains, get stops on defense, all the, the fundamental things that you need to do to win games. And sometimes you can get out there, get a little bit of momentum, hold on to it, and keep it going throughout the game. Well, we're going to take our first time out here on our Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show. When we come back, we'll start to break down these two teams. We'll hear from Travis Cooper, head coach of the Bulldogs, and we'll talk about these teams, the matchup tonight as well. Our Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show rolls on next here on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Gallagher Stadium here at Central Catholic High School. Josh Bush, Brent Rotten with you, our Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show as we are uh, set for regional quarterfinal action here tonight as the Bulldogs are on the road to take on the Fighting Irish of Central Catholic. Well, Defiance comes in with a record of 8-3. Uh, and three. Uh, They finished 6-3 and three in the Western Buckeye League for third-year head coach Travis Cooper, who has a career record of 91-59. and 59. He is 18-15. and 15 at Defiance coming off the win last Friday night. Brent, we were there. We saw it firsthand, a uh, dominating defensive performance uh, by the Bulldogs at Bay High School last Friday night. Shut down two almost 1,000-yard rushing yep. uh, attack uh, guys uh, for the Rockets, and uh, the defense really propelled them to that victory last Friday night. Yeah, it did in a game where you saw a ground game on both sides, moving the ball, holding on, running the clock. Uh, keeping the time of possession high for your team and keeping the other team off the field. Defiance played it a little bit better. We're a little tougher between the tackles and we're able to get a couple big plays. So you look at last week, one blemish on the for the defense was a big run on, on a botch snap and turned into a 50 plus yard run. So um, it was and if, really. And let's be honest, if you take that out of there, uh, Bay's at about 100 yards right. of total offense. If you think about that one play and eliminate it, they played a near flawless game. So they're going to have to be on that level again this week um, coming into this game. Taking care of business against Bay, you have a completely different opponent this week in Toledo Central Catholic. So you come in tonight, you, you look to play your best game just like you did last week and come out here and hope that it's enough. Well, the offense uh, has been sputtering, I would say, over the last several weeks. Uh, they started off uh, kind of blazing fire. Brogan Castillo goes down. Uh, he is back in the lineup. He's yep. been back in the lineup, but a team that was scoring at a clip of about 40, 43 points a game uh, right. has really been only getting about 15, 14, 15 points a game since uh, week six or week seven. Uh, something's got to click tonight. Honestly, if, if you look at it from the perspective of go out there and give it all you got, uh, you open it up, and, and what do you have to lose here against the top-ranked team? Yeah, that, that is definitely on par, correct, with everything you're looking for there. Tonight you come out and play your best game, you leave it all out there, and you've got not a whole lot to lose. You look at your opponent, anybody who's done picks this week, can, and they can find those picks, can see who's being picked here, and you've got nothing to lose, you leave it all out there. For a lot of kids, you know, this is for seniors, you're looking at, Every game from here on out is a potential last game, so why not go at it and give it everything you have? And I think we're going to see that tonight from Defiance. Well, we talked uh, with Travis Cooper earlier in the week, and he made that point exactly. This team has embraced the fact that everybody has 
giving them really no shot at, at opportunity to win this game. And they've embraced that, and they want to go out here, and they want to show, like, listen, we got nothing to lose. We're going to come out here, and we're going to play to the best of our ability and, and try to give them four quarters. And that's what you do. You play a complete game. You can't make mistakes tonight. You're playing against an opponent that you look at them, they're bigger, they're faster, but that doesn't mean they're more fundamentally sound, and you can't go out there and beat them at the game of football. So what you're doing tonight is coming out, trying to play your best game, and you got to live with why not us? And every single opponent that probably faces this opponent says, why not us? But we have to be the best team that they've seen to do that. So as we move on, gain a little bit of confidence, you jump into this game and just say, why not us? It could be us tonight that stops them and, and ends their state title run. And the way Defiance has been playing on defense, it's there. The key for them is going to be the offense and getting to that level. Well, I had an opportunity earlier this week to sit down and talk with Travis Cooper. We talked about the victory at Bay uh, over the Bay Rock it's last Friday night and the matchup tonight with the Central Catholic Fighting Irish as I went one-on-one -on -one with Defiance head coach Travis Cooper. Well, Coach, uh, last week uh, taking on the Bay Rockets, uh, great matchup I thought going in. Uh, defense really executed and you come out with a playoff win. Yeah, you know, our, our defense played phenomenally, you know, and I made the comment in the paper that, you know, their coach – um, said that you know that it was the most physical team they they'd seen all year, um, and was really impressed with uh, our game plan, and um, they were really complimentary. And you know it's good to hear that when you travel to a different part of the state and you go against uh, you know another team, and and that was really kind of what we wanted to establish uh, was to be the most physical team and to come out and make a statement early. And you know so I was really proud of the kids for for putting uh, the plan uh, in action and, and doing a great job and. And winning a, a, a tough game, you know, on the road against a, a team that had a lot of success this year. Well, you know, it, you, you battled all the way to the end of that game, and the the defense comes through at the end with that big stop and, and the, the strip sack. Uh, talk about, uh, you know, playing four quarters there. That's something you need to see in the, in the playoff run. Yeah, you know, when you're facing, you know, good teams, um, and most often it comes down to the wire. It's pretty close games, especially, you know, being an 8-9 seed, um, you know, 8-9 game. So, um, yeah, we've had some young guys that have stepped up and made some plays, you know, um, early in the season. You know, Kelton Gibbs wasn't really um, even playing on the D-line. He was at different places, and we were trying to find a spot for him, and he's kind of found a, a home on the D-line and, um, you know, came up with a, a big play, and then Cohen Stockman, you know, getting on that football. Um, you know, uh, Hutchison, you know, Logan Hutchison um, having a big interception, you know, to, to um, kind of um, put out any any momentum that they had uh, going there on, on a drive earlier. Um, you know, and just it basically came, you know, down to controlling the clock, shortening the game, and, and putting the pressure on them and forcing them to throw the, have to throw the football because – um, you know, all year they had not thrown the ball very much at all. So getting them out of their game plan, and, and I thought we did a good job of that. Well, you move on. Uh, you take on uh, now top-seeded uh, Toledo Central Catholic. Uh, and, uh, again, uh, you know what's in front of you here. Uh, what, are you, what are you talking about? What do we know about uh, as far as the Irish go for this matchup in round number two? Uh, you know, there's, there's a reason why they've been talked about, you know, all season in the returning, uh, defending uh, Division II state champs that bumped down to D3 and – in our region and um you know it's it's going to be a tough task uh, there's no doubt about it they've got a phenomenal team with phenomenal athletes and a great coaching staff who's won um at the highest of levels so um you know there's really no pressure on us i don't think anybody's given us much uh, of a shot and and our kids they kind of, kind of em, have embraced that you know our kids um are excited about the opportunity you know the spotlight that shines on central catholic you know they get to be in that spotlight and um, maybe can get recognized a little bit and, and, you know, we kind of fly under the radar at times. Um, but you know, it allows them to be on a big stage and, um, have an opportunity in front of them, you know, to, to win a, a big, big game against a team that, you know, was favored to, to go to the state title game, uh, this year. So, you know, it, again, I think our kids are just, uh, understand we got to be us. We can't be somebody else, um, play our game and, and go out and give it everything we got. What are a couple of keys that you're looking for, obviously, uh, to match up against uh, Toledo Central Catholic? Well, you know, I, I think, you know, we're going to have to play a complete game and in, in, in our most complete game of the season. Um, you know, I think that uh, we've had times when 
Um, certain parts have been phenomenal and in other parts maybe have not been, and we just haven't been consistent at putting it all together. And, and to win on Friday, we got to put it all together finally. And uh, I think it's in us. You know, I think we've got a, a, a pretty darn good football team. Um, I think we're going to present some challenges to them that maybe they're not expecting. Uh, so, you know, I think we've got to take care of the football. We've got to get some opportune uh, turnovers. Um, you know, we can't we can't shoot ourselves in the foot with penalties. Um, you know, just all the cliche things. But I think ultimately we're going to have to play a solid four quarters. All right, Coach. Well, appreciate the time and uh, look forward to seeing you on uh, Friday night against Central Catholic. All right. Thanks, Josh. Comments of Defiance head coach Travis Cooper as uh, he talked about t- tonight. Uh, obviously, you got to go out here and uh, essentially play like it's going to be your last game, but you got to go out here and the execution for four quarters is going to be the key here tonight for Defiance. Not taking a playoff, I think, is big. And you hang your hat on that, go out here. And if you leave it all on the field, whatever happens, happens. You can feel good about that. We know what this team is capable of in Defiance, and we know that when they're hitting on all cylinders, they're elite level on both offense and defense. Lately, it's been a little bit of a struggle on on offense. They've got to put all of that together tonight and take care of business. Well, we'll take another time out here on our Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show. When we come back, we'll talk about the opponents tonight in the Central Catholic Fighting Irish. That's still to come here on DC TV Sports. To Central Catholic High School Gallagher Stadium here in downtown Toledo. Josh Bush, Brent Rotten with you. Our Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show rolls on. Defiance at Central Catholic tonight in this Division Three Region 10 quarterfinal matchup. The winner tonight will take on either Mansfield Senior or Rocky River uh, next week. If you remember, Brent, I believe it was Mansfield Senior that knocked Defiance out in round number two last year. Yep. Um, in a uh, what was a really good game? Yeah, it was. It was <laughs> a tough actually game. Drove over there with my dad on, oh, for yeah? that game. So your dad goes to the Bulldog games? He does. Okay, All not right. tonight. I, I believe he's actually watching at home tonight. Oh, I had to I feel bad for him. I know. Yeah, keep the camera off us. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Well, the uh, opponent here tonight for Defiance Brent, uh, the Central Catholic Fighting Irish. They come in with uh, a record of eleven and zero. They were six and zero in the uh, Catholic High School League. Uh, out of the Detroit area. Correct. They kind of ran the table in that uh, and were the champions uh, for their head coach, Greg Dempsey, who comes in with 249 wins here at Central Catholic. Um, they've been on quite a run. They've been on 20 straight playoff appearances under his direction, uh, including um, uh, a record of 47 and, excuse me, yeah, 47 and 17 and four state championships, awesome. including a Division II state championship right. last year for this team. Lucky the everybody in Division Three lucky because they bumped down to Division yeah. Three. Um, <laughs> lucky, <laughs> lucky is the right word. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, this is a team, uh, and, and you look at it that they've got not only just talent, but they they win football games. They've won for years, uh, and they are putting kids at next level college football, uh, and they've got a lot of talent on this football team. Yeah, I mean this this school's put kids in the pros, Division One, you know, power conference athletes every single year. So it's it's a team that's they're built a little different, like you you say with coming down from Division two to Division three. Not exactly what we look at, at on the Defiance side and say that's a great thing, but it does. You get to play an elite level team, and when you get a chance to come out here and play, you get a chance to to make make a big difference. You get a chance to come out here and do something really special. So tonight's going to be one of those nights. I think we'll get a, a, a just really early with the tone being set. If if we're going to be able to really hang in here and and sucker punch and counter punch as much as we can. 449 to 110 is the total points for the season uh, for the Central Catholic team. Um, and uh, they've their defense is in eight games, uh, held teams under at eight points or under, including three shutouts tonight. So uh, it, it's not just an offensive team no. that can score points. It's a team on defense that will come out here. They're big and physical. And, uh, you know, they play a style of football uh, that they, and they'll tell you, it's not anything flashy. Yeah. They just want to run the football. And uh, yep. that's what head coach Greg Dempsey will tell you. He, they just want to run the football. Yeah, no doubt. And it's pretty simple. It's really not overly complex. And, you know, we talk about throughout the state of Ohio, when you look at like Division One football, the really high, big time schools, you see what's close to college football level talent. 
and this team is very similar to that. That they play a unique, a little bit of a unique style in terms of just being fast, athletic, big and strong at every single position. So you don't necessarily get that every single game in the WBL. It's a little bit of a change, but you go out here tonight and you take care of what you can take care of, and you see how it falls down. A couple of guys that stand out: wide receiver Jalen uh, Watson uh, has uh, committed yeah. to Iowa. Uh, he comes in with 673 yards uh, receiving. Uh, running back Marquan Broswell uh, has a Division two commit, uh, yep. uh, 1,240 yards and five touch, or excuse me, 25 touchdowns. He's had five touchdowns in games this year. Right. Uh, but uh, last week they uh, got their opening playoff win over Bowling Green, 42 to seven, right here at uh, Gallagher Stadium. Uh, Broswell just 55 yards, but he punched it in the end zone for two scores. Uh, he's one of those two guys that you're going to see out of the backfield. They've got a, a junior that runs the football for him as well. Does a nice job, Tyler Morgan. But uh, you're going to get a heavy dose of those guys uh, and uh, they're still able to throw the ball when they have to but the running the football and it starts up front they got guys that are six five 313 pounds on the offensive line I mean as, as much as that, that doesn't make it very difficult for you to run the football when you got that much size up there and and that much uh, you know in terms of a wall uh, s separating everybody you can get through those holes and you can get five six seven eight yards before you're even in the vicinity of a tackler so yeah it's going to be a test tonight the two ball carriers are, are very strong you got one back Braswell with 25 touchdowns you know he's averaging two and a half touchdowns a game an average game for him is two touchdowns which is you know just phenomenal to think about sure. but they have players that at every position that are going to go on and play college football whether it be division three division two um, division one football and some of them major college division one football so you know athletes everywhere big strong team it's going to be fun to watch no matter what but you look at they throw thrown for 1200 yards it's not they're not going to wow you with the pass they have a kid going to a big 10 school at wide receiver who has 600 yards <laughs> i mean to think about Absolutely. that and that's all based off of you know exactly what he looks like and how gifted he is on the field well, depth is uh, certainly something that uh, you're going to chalk up to them as well. Uh, we were watching the quarterbacks out here throw, and uh, <laughs> their starting quarterback, uh, Terry Collins, very efficient. He yep. throws the ball at about 66%, which is pretty good. Uh, the, those 1,200 yards, six touchdowns, nothing flashy there, but right. their backup quarterback throws a nice football. And you got to think about it with some of the scores that they've had. Their second string and even probably some of their freshmen have gotten some reps in. And we've talked about this. Once you get the reps at the varsity level, by this point of the season, Oh, yeah. uh, you're not considered a freshman anymore, but depth is uh, certainly something that uh, plays to their advantage as well. Yeah, it does. When you look at through 11 games and they've manhandled the majority of their opponents, um, their secondary players, their backups, and even down into their freshmen have played at the level of, you know, probably got minutes adding up to three or four Friday night full games. So, like you said, if they're a sophomore, they're now basically a junior, even though it's their sophomore year. If they're a freshman, they're a sophomore at this point. So um, very experienced, very deep, a really, really, really good looking team. And it's just it's going to be a good game. And Defiance is going to have to play their A game tonight and hope the chips fall their way. Well, our Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show rolls on. Let's take a time out. Uh, when we come back, we'll get you our keys to the game. We'll get you starting lineups, national anthem, all of that to come here as it is the Division Three Region 10 quarterfinal matchup. Defiance on the road tonight to take on the Fighting Irish of Central Catholic. We're back with more after this on DCTV Sports. Welcome back to our Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show as the Central Catholic Fighting Irish Marching Band is on the field playing their alma mater. I want to make sure we respect that as we're outside here at uh, Central Catholic. But uh, that's correct. You are correct there, Brent. Uh, appreciate that. But uh, looking at this matchup, uh, like we said, Brent, uh, winner tonight uh, will move on. They'll take either uh, Mansfield Senior or uh, Rocky River, which uh, on the other side of that bracket is, let me see here, that is the four and five seed game. So, um, and then the other four teams, Norton, Medina Buckeye, Tiffin Columbian, and Ontario are what's left here in the eight teams uh, in this region. Of course, next week they'll start moving to neutral sites as far as uh, playoffs go and stuff. But uh, of course, the task at hand is getting through the 
this quarterfinal matchup first. Sure, you worry about uh, that. Hopefully we get to experience a neutral site next week. But, you know, you look at last week at Bay Village, quite a jaunt to get out there and get to that game a little closer this week. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you look at your opponent, you look at the teams remaining within the division, and that's when you land in that 8-9 game. You know the prize of advancing and winning in that is straight to the top seed. And that's what we're going to run into this week. So, you know, it, it's a test, and it's going to be it's going to be a ball game. Let's send it down to the field for our Alps Defiance 147 National Anthem. Uh, let's talk a couple of keys here tonight. Uh, let's start uh, the visiting team here, the Defiance Bulldogs. Uh, uh, they're, they're on the road. Going to be probably a tough environment here tonight for them. But uh, what are some keys here for the Bulldogs to pull off a win over top-ranked, top-seeded Central Catholic? Yeah, it's it, simply put, uh, it's get the offense going and control the clock. Uh, Central Catholic is going to look to run the football. We're going to look to, to run the football as well. Who can win that battle? We need to out-possession them to get a game going here. And look at it from the Central Catholic standpoint, uh, the home team here tonight, uh, keys to the game for them. Stay elite, it's really simple. They're elite level now. If they don't play to that level, they're gonna be vulnerable. If they stay elite tonight, they won't be. I think mistakes are gonna play a huge, huge. role in this game. Uh, you know, obviously, if you uh, can can force a turnover, which we've seen this defiance defense yes. do, they're a very opportunistic uh, crowd, uh, or a group on defense, and uh, there's a shiny skull coming up there. There is. Wow. <laughs> Blast from the past. No doubt. Here at the Gallagher wow. Stadium. But, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, it, the, it's an opportunistic group that we have on defense uh, for Defiance. And if they yeah. can force a turnover, the key really to that, though, is they have to be able to put points on the board if they force that turnover. Yeah, you often look at a game, like we talked about it last week, going in and uh, can we win the turnover battle? That's win by one. Um, and you feel pretty good about it. Tonight, you're going to have to win by two or three. If we can create two or three turnovers, turn them into points, it's going to give us, again, that possession advantage, which, if we turn that into points, is going to give us a chance to hang in late, make a big play, and win the game. Well, uh, let's take a look at some other uh, games around Northwest, or some uh, teams around Northwest Ohio that uh, are playing in uh, round number two. Uh, Division one, region two, another Toledo school, Perrysburg, the number 10 seed. They got a win last Friday night. They're on the road at Olin Tangy, Berlin, the number two seed. Big matchup in region number six, uh, Division two, region number six. I think one of my, yeah. uh, for me, one of, the, one of the best games in Northwest Ohio tonight happening at Anthony Wayne, which is yep. right down the road here. Uh, they're the number two seed taking on number seven. Avon Lake, oh. and uh, we know Avon Lake from, you, you from remember, years gone you by. You remember 20 years ago the Avon Lake teams that were, you know, top two, top three in all of Ohio. And they're still good. Yeah, and, and they're still good. And a seven seed. <laughs> uh, Southview, the four seed, will uh, take on uh, Olmstead Falls, the five seed in that same region. Yep. Uh, dropping down uh, Division Three, Region 12, you got uh, WBL schools there. Number six seed Solana at Trotwood Madison. They're going to have their hands full there. Fifth ranked or fifth seeded uh, Wapakoneta on the road at number four yeah. Vandalia Butler. That's a winnable That's game there for the Redskins. It really is, and how how cool is it that you know we look at that from the WBL standpoint? And we really hope one of those teams advance. But at the same time, if both would advance, you would have a WBL matchup. 
Um, How coming crazy would up, that be? You know, in the third week of the playoffs, which would be very unique, not something you see typically to get a league game that late in the season. And then if you look uh, Division uh, 5, another WBL school in St. Mary's, the eight seed there at Sandusky Perkins, the top seed. Tough game there. Napoleon, yep. <laughs> they, they just seem to draw that straw. They've been yeah. at Cleveland, they've been over at Glenville a, a few times now. Yeah, it's, it's that it's that kryptonite that gets them. I mean, you, you, you go and win a big game last week, end up playing Cleveland Glenville. Similar to that, we talked about Avon Lake. For years, they've been a dominant program. Van Wert's on the road at Shelby tonight. Uh, another interesting matchup. Uh, and I think some folks have kind of put Liberty Center at this level the, uh, above everybody. But I'm telling you, Huron has had a great program. That's And I think that Liberty Center is going to have their hands full tonight with Huron. When you go 1-8, I mean, if you're the one seed, you think we can get through the first round pretty easily. We should get a favorable matchup in the second round, especially since we'll get it at home. That is a test of an 8 seed. That's a team that you typically would throw in a top 3 seed in any region they're in. I think another favorite uh, for mine, uh, we went, I think it was you and I that went uh, a couple of years ago over to Archbold yeah, as uh, look Cold at Water. Game. Look at that game. Uh, that's a six versus three. I believe that when we were there, uh, that game ended in uh, last second play yeah. down on the, in the end zone. Unreal. That's right. I think we were standing right yes, in front of it. Yeah, it was an incredible matchup then. Uh, and tonight, it's, you know, to Archbold get to host a, a team like Cold Water, one of the power, power you know, smaller schools, but. They, they're in it every year, running through win after win after win, and they're always going to be tough. Heck of a game in Archibald tonight. How about parity for you as we head down in Division Six and uh, Division Seven? Uh, I know you like that word. Love it. Uh, but uh, in uh, Division wow. Seven, Division Seven specifically, but Look at um, Eden, the number 14 seed, they get a win. They're on the road at uh, Macomb tonight. Uh, that'll be obviously uh, a tough battle for Eden tonight. Sure. Um, Crestview at the 15 spot gets a, a win and go. They're on the road at Lima Central Catholic tonight. How about this, Patrick Henry? No guarantees of a second round home game at the number five seed. They're home yeah. as they take on number 13 Arlington, who knocked off Antwerp last Friday night. Uh, <laughs> and then you got Pandora Gilboa going to Hopewell Loudon. Uh, yeah. You got to, I mean, just some crazy, crazy seeded games there in uh, Division 7. 16 teams get in, 13, 14, and 15 in the same region advanced. That's that's just Unheard amazing. Of. Yeah, I mean, to get one of those it can happen is understandable. Maybe even kind of expected at this point in the season. You know, teams hitting the strides late in the year and, and catching fire. But to get three of them advanced like that and just shake up everything in that region, it's going to make Division 7 fun. You know, looking at Patrick Henry, they've been a beast all year. Hope tonight they can continue. Absolutely. Well, we're getting uh, closer to kickoff here tonight at uh, Gallagher Stadium in Def in uh, <laughs> some downtown pretty Toledo. Much, pretty much same thing. As the Central Catholic football team comes onto the field, that is a large roster of kids right there. That is a very large roster of kids. They do for for uh, school same size or similar sized as what we are. They do have quite a few more bodies out there. Well, glad to have you along here joining us tonight on DC TV Sports. If you're watching live on YouTube, make sure you uh, click that subscribe button on YouTube as well. Uh, we'd love to have you subscribed as uh, obviously the football season, Brent, is winding down. Sure. But uh, the winter sports season will be here uh, less than a month away. And we've got a uh, we're putting the final touches on some schedule but uh, we're gonna have some high school basketball for you boys and girls we might throw some wrestling at you we might throw wow. some swimming and diving at you we might throw some bowling at you i know you're a kegler I, i'm a kegler you were you used to be on the diving team too i i, I, did. I remember back in the, the day triple indy actually yeah 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 they it was something with a, a, a diving board that broke that you couldn't right. yeah. do it anymore well, the, but the triple indy is the, what that's where me. they you caught on and they called you the big squeeze I from there that, on out, i think right? that's what it was yeah, yeah. that's what i thought I, it's from squeezing into. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, <So>. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Uh, I want to say a big thanks to our production team as well. They uh, they got here about two o'clock this afternoon, and uh, we uh, we have a beautiful perch up here on the, uh, yeah. the at the press box. No and, speakers close by or anything. But uh, we've uh, we appreciate all their hard work getting us ready here for this uh, game tonight. As Defiance will be receiving the opening kickoff. Or excuse me, Toledo Central Catholic will be receiving the opening kickoff as we are set for it here as well. Thanks for watching our Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show tonight. Thank uh, Bob Estel, and make sure you stop out on North Clinton Street in Defiance and uh, visit Bob, the entire gang out there. Nobody beats an Estel deal. You've got Bob's word on it.
Key for Defiance tonight, and this is going to be at go here when 15 seconds when the clock expires and we're ready to get started, is going to be get them off the field with zero points on this first possession. Set that tone early defensively. That's where you're strongest. Get the ball and make it hurt right away. Get the momentum and hold on to it. I think that is your only way tonight to get this W. Well, Defiance will tee it up here as we're just waiting for the clock folks to reset things up here and we'll be underway in this Division 3 Region 10 quarterfinal matchup. Josh Bush and Brett Rotten with you here from Gallagher Stadium in downtown Toledo, Ohio. As we are set now for our FNM Bank opening kickoff and it will be a low squib kick trying to change it up a little bit here and they will have plenty of room across the 50. 45-40, room at the 30. He's not going to be stopped. It'll be opening kickoff. We'll go back for a touchdown. And that is number four, Jacob Spears, a junior running back who just went 65 yards. And the opening kickoff, an FNM Bank opening kickoff turns into a Premier Bank touchdown for the Irish. Keys to the game now, we just throw those right out the window and we go to making adjustments. And you're gonna get behind early here, tried a little unique squib kick maybe to, to throw them off a little bit. It did not work. And you know, you gave up the touchdown. Y you get the ball back here and you got a counter punch. The point after is on the way, it is up and it is good. And the Central Catholic Fighting Irish will strike first. The opening kickoff returns 65 yards for a touchdown by Jacob Spears. It's Central Catholic 7, Defiance 0. We're back after this on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Gallagher Stadium here at Toledo Central Catholic. Josh Bush, Brent Rowan with you. Martin Woods Ford scoring drive summary. 65 yards, opening kickoff return for a touchdown. Point after was good. 7-0 Central Catholic. 12 seconds off the clock, you know, still the positive here. Got a lot of ball game left. So the ensuing kickoff coming up here for Central Catholic, Anthony Wilder and Abel Rubio are the deep men for the Bulldogs. Let's see a big Bulldog return here. And it will be a low line drive kick. It'll be filled by one of the up men. I believe that's Brogan Castillo with it across the 25 and he'll be hit and dropped uh, out across the 30. And that's where this Defiance offense will come onto the field. Let's get our Baker Schindler starting lineups for this Defiance offense. They're led by their uh, junior quarterback, Brez Zipfel, and of course, that senior running back in Brogan Castillo, and you can't forget about Anthony Wilder. Yeah, you can't, big time ball player and Anthony Wilder, and like you said, with, with Brez at quarterback, and looking at Brogan, you know you got ball players that, that can play, they've played well all year, and have seemed to get better for the most part as the season has went along, so see if we can continue to make impact on offense. First down at 10 for the Bulldogs. Uh, Central Catholic in a 3-4 defense. They'll throw on first down, complete to Wilder out near the 40-yard line. He'll be spun down immediately. Number 12 on coverage there for Central Catholic. DeHaron and Flowers. Duran, excuse me. Short gain there, getting four, but it's staying on schedule, getting a couple yards to start off, not getting in the hole. Good to have you along here tonight. Uh, week number 12 of the high school football season. Bulldogs trailing 7-0 early. Their first offensive series of the game with two receivers on that left side. It'll be there we go. The Brogan Castillo up the middle. He's into Central Catholic territory at the 45, down near the 40-yard line. Big run there for Brogan Castillo. Yeah, it definitely was game of 21 there for Brogan. So hit a hole, really didn't get touched until about 15, 16 yards down the field. Able to get 21 on his first carry. That's setting the tone um, for the with the offensive line. They're opening up a gap to get through. Um, if they can consistently do that all night, we're going we're gonna to be pretty successful on the ground. Good start so far for the Bulldogs on offense. 
So first down and 10 now at the Fighting Irish 42 as the Bulldogs in shotgun formation and it will be Wilder this time. He'll be hit and dropped and he has nowhere to go. A couple of red shirts in there quickly for the Irish. Kevin Arnold and I believe that was 56, Big boy. Ronald Collins. There are a couple of large fellas down yeah, there. Yeah, big time, big time. <laughs> They've got size up front there, and, and our Bulldogs can match it a little bit, but, man, you got four or five guys up there. And then you look at the linebacker core, and they're almost as big. <laughs> Good size team. To find a look to the sideline, they lost one on first down, second and 11 now at the 43. Two backs in the backfield for Zippel. Play clock at five. It'll be second man through. This is Castillo with it. He's going to get the end. He'll lower the shoulder across the 40. He's nice going to have about there. five. Yeah, it looks like five, maybe six. Give him seven. Yeah, seven yards. Yeah, a little bonus there on the spot. Might have got a little half yard help, but it's going to bring up third manageable, third and four. So got the playbook wide open here. You can do a little run play, you can do a little pass play, or you could keep it with your quarterback, get a little run option going here and seeing if Press can pick it up. Nine minutes in rolling here, opening quarter. Defiance's first offensive series. Trickery, Look a little trickery, trickery. Flea flicker. He's got a room to throw, and he's got a wide there open. We go. Stockman at the 10. Touchdown. Into the end zone for Woo. the touchdown. Bulldogs, 37 Woo. yards. And that was Rodenberger Gotta to love Cohen that. Stockman. It's a Premier Bank touchdown, and the Bulldogs return that opening score. 37 yards? 37 yards, uh, Garrett Rodenberger with the, with the pass on that to Cohen Stockman. So you saw the big play. You saw it kind of open up, and you saw the design um, with the motion coming through. So able to complete the pass, look pretty. Nicasio Hall on for the point after, and it is right down Broadway. And the Bulldogs have answered the opening kickoff touchdown. And they have tied this ball game at seven. It's Central Catholic seven. Defiance seven, 906 to go in our first quarter. We're back after this on DC TV Sports. Get our Mark Boat Sports scoring drive summary. It was just uh, five plays, and it covered 66 yards in about two minutes yep. as the Bulldogs go down, and they'll get a tight end reverse pass from Garrett Rodenberger to Cohen Stockman, 37 yards for the touchdown. Point after was good, and the Bulldogs have tied this one at seven. Our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary here in this first quarter. We know Coach Cooper and how he's always got a bunch of tricks up a sleeve. So, you know, breaking one out early, I mean, you, you why not take a chance? It caught him well, a little bit off guard, and it was beautiful. Confidence, I think, there. Yeah. After that opening kickoff, you got to come out. You, you've got to answer that. And, you know, using that on third down to get a touchdown, that, that's a huge momentum boost, a, a confidence booster for this Defiance squad. Yeah, there's no doubt it is. And, and you got Brogan Castillo, who really set the tone there with a couple tough runs, giving them confidence to go down there and make that big play. And so in kickoff, high end over and kick will take in inside the five across the 20 to the 25 30 still going at the 40 got a blocker <laughs> midfield 45 40 and he will go 96 yards and into the end zone tyler morgan wow if you like offense you've come to the right <laughs> spot uh, you know the biggest thing here though with defiance is do you really want to get in a shootout with uh, with Central Catholic? With that smorgasbord of offensive tricks up their sleeve, you never know, Josh. You just don't. I don't. Um, covering kicks, out, <laughs> they're, they're 0 for 2. So um, I maybe find I find a way to avoid that and get their offense on the field. We might have better luck. So Central Catholic Almost gets a got that kick. 90. Wilder. So the point after is good. Central Catholic 14, Defiance 7, 8.51 to go in the, in the uh, first quarter. We're back after this on DC TV Sports.
Welcome back to Gallagher Stadium. Get our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary. Central Catholic's making it easy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, technically not a play, but the right. uh, kickoff, the ensuing kickoff after the touchdown return, 96 yards by Tyler Morgan. And the uh, point after was good. Central Catholic 14 and Defiance 7. That's our Mark Boats Ford scoring drive summary here in the uh, early on in the second. <laughs> Listen, this was our final score last Friday. And it was. I mean, if you think, we're three minutes into the game. If you think about that, how, you know, that game was. Second half was pretty slow, and, and but you're right. 21 points was the total in, in last week's game, and that was a 14-7 to defiance win. We're staring at 21 points now, down 14-7, to and not even four minutes have rolled off the clock. So... It's yeah. pretty, it's it's pretty amazing. Ensuing kickoff, they'll kick the other way this time. And it will be fielded on the run Antonio by Lopez. Antonio Lopez. He'll be hit out of bounds across 10. the 30-yard line. So a nice return Antonio there for Lopez Defiance. And they'll the have it for their second offensive series of the game here tonight. Similar starting spot as last drive. This one's lining up right at the 30. I think uh, we started what somewhere around 34. The th 34. So yeah, very similar spot. So I think you're going to see Bulldogs come out here, get that run game going, and build off of that. I, you know, we'll see what kind of tricks that they have up their sleeve. They've got a few more of those. It would it would be much needed at this point. But you, know, you just keep rolling here, and yeah, you keep sucker punching. That's what they're doing. This is a boxing match right now, and you, you take a lick and you get back up and try to hit back. And it'll be a little misdirection. Brogan Castillo, second man through. He'll be wrapped up, hit for a loss, all the way back near the 25-yard line. And the Fighting Irish defense sniffed that one out pretty quickly. Yeah, right on top of it there with a little misdirection on the handball. You know, hitting the backfield for a three-yard loss. Um, just never really got anything going there. And when you slow the – when the, the speed comes around the edge there for, for Central Catholic and you slow down and play with a little bit of a misdirection, a little delayed handoff, you're going to run into that where if you don't hit the hole right away and get through, you're going to be engulfed by defending, defensive players. Loss of three back to the 27-yard line. It'll be second down and 13 now, and five receiver set for Zipfel. Looking to his left, it'll be in and out of the hands of Antil or, excuse me, Anthony Wilder. It'll fall incomplete at the 35-yard line. Kevin Arnold on the coverage for the Fighting Irish and good look there from Brez and Wilder just not able to hang on to it. Yeah, you're seeing single coverage everywhere so far on every offensive play. So that they trust, that Central Catholic trust their DBs and their ability to cover there. A little bit of space. Anthony Wilder got down the field about five to seven yards and got some space, some open territory. Pass was right on, just dropped. Third down and 13 now, big third down for this Defiance offense. They're looking to set up a screen to the left. It'll be Castillo with it. He's got one man to beat, and he does at the 25-30. 35-40, he's got the first down, and the sticks will move as a well-designed play. You yep. draw them to the right, and you come back to a screen to, to uh, Brogan Castillo, and then you get a one-on-one -on -one out here on a, against the DB. That is exactly where you want him to be. Yeah, exactly right. He had one tackler there and a lot of green area, so as soon as he made the juke move, got around the edge, was able to look right at the sticks and he got he needed 13 yards and got 13 on the dot so perfect play drawn up executed nicely so first down and 10 now for the bulldogs at the 40 yard line seven and a half and rolling opening quarter josh bush brent round with you here on dc tv sports thanks for tuning in live tonight on our youtube channel this will be Jordan Wright on a in a round. He's got room across the 45 Speed. on your midfield as he turned on that second gear. And a nice run there by the sophomore Jordan Wright. And a nice mixture of players in this early quarter, Brent. We've seen a little bit of everything here, getting guys involved, giving Central Catholic different looks. The Bulldogs have really mixed it up well here so far. Yeah, you've seen a little bit of an end around. We saw a misdirection on a handoff. We've seen a halfback pass or, or, or an alternate passer. So you've seen a lot of different stuff. Screen pass to Brogan, we see those occasionally, but not. it's not something that you see every game. So, yeah, definitely have worked in some, some fun play so far. Second, second and one. Second and one, just short of midfield. Up the gut they'll go. They'll have the first down with Castillo. And he'll pull the pile forward for a gain of about four. And a nice, strong run there. When you need a yard, you give it to Brogan Castillo, and chances are he's going to get it for you. Yeah, you like that. Second down and one, so you know you got two, two legit cracks at getting a yard. With Brogan Castillo, you typically are only going to need one shot with that, and he got it right there. Like you said, three and a half, four yards. Nice pickup for Brogan, and setting the tone as they've already crossed midfield. At the Central Catholic 47-yard line. First down and 10 for the Bulldogs. Three receivers to the far sideline to Brez Zipfel's right. 
He'll have a single back in the backfield. Now the motion man is Wilder. They'll just run a quick pitch to the side, and he'll go across the 45, and he'll be wrapped up and tackled by a whole host of red shirts. Going to gain a couple of yards, but... Game, look like they gave him four there. Good ball, pitch to number 11, Anthony O'Reilly. Nice run, at, to, able to get a couple yards there and get about three up the field so you know, like, like we talk about a lot on first down you'll take that almost every single play so second down and six now halfway home in our opening quarter here at Gallagher Stadium in downtown Toledo Zipple with Castillo in the backfield they'll fake it his way gonna throw it and it'll be tipped and Ooh. almost intercepted he had a, a big defensive uh, player in his, and Deron Flowers was in his paw and his face and got the big paw on it there. If he's able to get it over him though, he had a wide open receiver. Yeah, he did. Uh, that very good looking play in terms of how drawn up. He had a big ath uh, athletic end coming at him. And like he said, got that mitten out there, that big old hand, got it up, smacked the ball down, fell incomplete. Luckily, not deflected to an interception there. Tip drills never anybody's no, favorite. No, 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 not on offense. You don't like those. Another big third down here for the Defiance offense. Five receivers, three to the right, two to the left. Zipfel in shotgun formation, back to pass. Blitz coming. He'll be hit and sacked all the way back at the Defiance 45-yard line. And a big sack there. Devontae Wright Ward. And it will force the Bulldogs into a punting situation here. Big loss there, and uh, it's almost like uh, Brez just didn't see him coming through. No, yeah, definitely getting the handoff out, trying to get back and get back and let the receivers get downfield just took way too much time. A couple blitzers got through, got through the front blockage, and once they do that, yeah, they was smooth sailing for the defensive side as Brez had nowhere to go. Siffel is the punter, and he'll get this one away. Just a low line drive kick. Ah, It'll hit and stick. go into the end zone. So a drive going for a bit there for Defiance, but they'll have to punt it away. And, well, Brent, for the first time tonight, we're going to take a look at the Central Catholic offense. Yeah, we are. Uh, you know, they, they've put up 14 points, no defensive touchdowns, but two special teams touchdowns on kick returns. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, we're going to get a chance to look at this run first offense coming out for Central Catholic. And this is the, the point in the game for, if you're Defiance, where if you give up a big one here, you're starting to get into that scary territory already. So big time on the defensive side here. Get the DBs up, a little press at the line of scrimmage. Get the guys in the backfield. The guys Stop to, them. Guys to look for here, senior running back Marquan Broswell, number 22. And he'll throw it on first down. It'll be complete. And this is Jalen Watson. He'll go across the 30, 35, 40. He's pushed out of bounds. And Watson is another guy you got to look for as he'll be moving on to the University of Iowa next year. And a big completion there on first down for quarterback Terry Collins. Yeah, 25 yards on a pretty simple pass for, from Collins to Watson. And you saw that speed, Josh, on the edge and able to get out there and make a big play right away. And they'll give it to Broswell up the middle on first and 10. And he'll be hit and stopped after a gain of a couple. Football carried by a little extra Mark curriculars Ryan. going yeah, on yeah. afterwards. But this is football. Number 17, Gary Robinson. Also, let's credit number 68, Ray Salina. Under five to go opening quarter. Central Catholic with a second down and seven near midfield. Collins will take the snap, and it'll be Broswell with it again up the middle. He'll just push forward Mark out Collins near the 45 right of Defiance. It should be enough for a Central Catholic six. first down. Needed seven, got right there at the sticks for seven, so able to move the chains again. It's their second first down, and they were able to utilize the pass on the first play, mixing in a couple runs here to move the chains. Very dynamic on offense. Four receivers, a little tempo here for Central Catholic. They'll throw it. A wide open receiver out across the 40 35. And that is hauled in by Preston Freisel, a sophomore receiver, number 17. And he is a pretty good sized kid for a sophomore, so. And it'll be a quick screen on this near sideline on first down. It'll be caught, stopped immediately as that was Sherrard Vaughn with the reception. The Bulldog tacklers, number six, Abel Rubio, and number 11, Anthony Wilder. Abel Rubio, Anthony Wilder in on the stop for the Bulldogs. Second down and eight now at the Defiance 30. Collins in shotgun formation. He'll have Broswell behind him. He fumbles the football. It's on the ground. It's on the ground. We'll see who has it. 
Let's I go. We got the ball. Looks like Bulldogs. Let's go. And the first turnover of the night goes the way of the Bulldogs as Broswell will fumble it and Defiance will take over. 3.38 to go. Brent Huge. We talked about mistakes. The turnover, the first one of the night here, belongs to the Defiance Bulldogs. And you got to win that battle. We, we, we talked about it a little bit in the pregame. Tonight's a night where you probably got to go out and get two or three even more. And you got to make those points count when you get those turnovers. So getting the ball here, turn it into some points. If it's get down the field and kick a field goal, if it's punch it in for seven, you got to get down the field and immediately take the little bit of momentum we grabbed right there and hold on to it and only extend it and make it bigger. So first down and 10 now, 29-yard line for the Bulldogs. I believe they're looking to reset the play clock. Yeah, they definitely are. Team meeting. Wow. They got Seinfeld. big screens up over here on That's, the uh, sideline. Oh, it's, it's Seinfeld. They're watching Seinfeld. Oh, got it. Yeah. First and 10 for Defiance. Their own 29-yard line. Ziflin shotgun formation looking to throw. He'll go to the far right side. It's caught by Brady Borton out near the 35-yard line and a nice first down completion. We're seeing a little bit more of the air game here today for this Bulldogs offense. Really mixing it up and getting them where you can get them. You know, getting six there to Brady Borton, like you said earlier. Brez is mixing up the receivers and getting as many guys touches as possible tonight. Gain of six, you gotta like that on first down. And we talk about, uh, we've talked about it through the season, staying on schedule. This will be Castillo with it, and he's going to work to get back to the line. He's actually going to gain a couple of yards. Kind of made something out of nothing yep. there. Yeah, Brogan, who, who turned that into what looked like a two- or three-yard loss, ended up turning it into a two- or three-yard gain there. So, you like seeing that? Like we talk about, you know, if you've watched us throughout the season, we appreciate you first. But uh, if you've watched, uh, you know, Brent and I talk about staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks. What you do now is you have a third down and two situation on yeah. schedule here third and two extremely manageable yeah and that's the key is you don't like big losses um you obviously don't like sacks or, or negative losses in the run game you get the third and two with a back like broken castillo you feel like nine out of ten times you're going to pick up that first down so third down and two they'll give it to castillo he's going to lower the shoulder he's going to go forward he's going to have the first down and a nice run there another strong run by this defiance offense and Credit to that offensive line, Brent. You could see the surge limiting the penetration from that uh, Central Catholic defensive line. Yeah, always big down there when you get those hogs up front there to pack it in tight, limit the penetration, get through, hit the hole, and pick up three or four yards. When you need two, you can get three or four, put you in a good spot, move those chains down the field, set it up again, restart and go. Two minutes to go in the quarter. Three receivers, four Zipfel, excuse me, four looking to this near sideline. Caught by Wilder at the 45. Out near midfield, he'll be pushed out of bounds. And we got a little wow, extra. There we, go. there we go. We got a flag yeah. on that. Brady, Brady Borton couple just twos got, on twos. Kevin Arnold just took Brady Borton for a ride well after the play on the out of bounds. And wow. Yeah, you're going to see a pass completion there and 15 yards tacked on to the end in a very unheady play by an experienced player there. Getting in there. Yeah, he's getting a talking to, and it, he's going to come, gonna, he's gonna gonna come, come off over to the sideline. Watch, you're going to come yeah. over and watch Seinfeld. So they'll move that ball all the way down to the Central Catholic 36-yard line. It is first down for Defiance. And uh, the well, you can see, Brent, this game has already been a little chippy. You've yeah. seen, and again, it's elite player, they're taught to go to the whistle, right? Go to yep. the whistle, go to the whistle. Sometimes you go a little bit past the whistle. That was uh, Let's play off football. That's what this is. Minute 47, misdirection. Big Castillo with it. 35-30. He'll be yeah, hit and knocked Castillo. down inside the 30-yard line. A big run there again for number 24, Brogan Castillo. You love seeing that there. Brogan hit the and hole. And it, like he's done all night and really he's done all season is turn gains that look like they should be two, three yards into six, seven, eight yards. Turn gains that should be two-yard losses into four, five yards. So he's always able to get a little extra than what's given to him. Second down and six now at the 29 of Central Catholic. Excuse me, second down and four. They Sc gained six. Yeah, yeah, scoreboard operator struggling a little tonight. 29-yard line, two backs in the backfield again with Zipfel, and they're going to have motion. That's a first down. There we go. And that left defensive end, nice job there by Brez Zipfel. That'll be a first down. A little extra hard count there. Got the guys hitting on all cylinders here on offense. And like you said, you needed that four yards there 
little extra head, a little extra hard count, moved it right up. We don't even have to snap the ball there to get that first down. So, I mean, this is kind of like you got, you got almost got Central Catholic right now on their heels. The unfamiliar territory for them. Breslow keep it on first down. He's going to go for it all. He's got Rodenberger touchdown Bulldogs. <laughs> it's a 24-yard pass from Brez Zipfel to Garrett Rodenberger, and the Bulldogs incredible are within one. Incredible pass play, Brez find over the top to Garrett Rodenberger, who threw the touchdown pass early in the game, has now caught and received a, uh, tossed and received a touchdown tonight. And who would have thought that we would be here? Nicasio Hall on for the point after touchdown. Snap on the way, hold is there, kick is up, and the kick is good. And the Bulldogs have tied it. 56.9 seconds to go, opening quarter. Defiance 14, Central Catholic 14. We're back after this on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Gallagher Stadium here <laughs> at Toledo Central Catholic. Defiance with our Mark Motes, Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary. That's a drive that went six plays and covered 71 yards. A 29-yard touchdown pass from Brez Zipfel to Garrett Rodenberger. The point after is good. It's our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary tied at 14. And, uh, well, Brent, uh, what a nice job there by Defiance. That comes off of the fumble. Yeah, and that, and that, Josh, that is the key. When they make mistakes, turn them into points. You used a lot of different ways to get the ball down the field there. 20 penalty yards, a long pass play, good strong running, mixing it into Brady Borton to Anthony Wilder to Brogan Castillo. So utilizing everybody, being a more dynamic, unpredictable offense, and it's paying off so far. Ensuing kickoff here for Defiance. Going to need some work on this one. Onslaught, uh, is that? Okay. And a squib <laughs> kick down there. I mean, I, I know that was a. <laughs> at first, it looked just like an onside kick, but. Going to be honest with you. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. The, the first two not a bad idea. Have, the, the first two kickoffs have gone for a touchdown. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, it's it's definitely tough to uh, cover those when early on when you see what they're able to do when they get the ball in their hands and get the damage when they get to the outside. So I don't dislike the squib kicks. I don't dislike kicking it out of bounds at this point. Makes more sense to play for an extra, for a little longer. So a quick hitter to Watson on this right side. He'll be hit as he goes across midfield. It's gonna be near first down. I think he's going to be about a yard or so shy. Jalen Watson is that big play guy, as we mentioned earlier, headed to okay, Iowa to play football. And you can see the dynamic speed and athletic ability on the edge when he touches the ball. Big plays happen. That's and we got a false start on the uh, far sideline here, as I think they were trying to hard count of their own, yeah, they and uh, they got a wide receiver on that far sideline. That was Preston Friesel, who uh, jumped on that side. So. Yeah, and, and that's been penalties so far. I mean, if you look at Defiance, the two mistakes on the kicking game has been it for them in terms of negative marks. Central Catholic has been penalized, and that's cost them, and that's why Defiance is hanging in this game with a tie score. It's a handoff there to Braswell, who's stuffed. Braswell is stuffed. And chances of that may be our final play of this quarter. We'll see. 12 seconds, 11 seconds on the game clock. They are at pace, but they're definitely not going to get this one off. And I think they're going to head to the second quarter. We played one at Gallagher Stadium at Toledo Central Catholic. Bulldogs 14. Defiance tied with Toledo Central Catholic after one at 14. We're back after this on DC TV Sports.
Welcome back to Gallagher Stadium here at Toledo Central Catholic. Good to have you along this morning. This morning, this, this evening. Morning. I, I don't know, know. The way this game's going, slowing down, tight game, might play 17 or 18 overtimes tonight. We might be playing tomorrow morning. Good thing, though, Josh. Longer weekend. Absolutely. <laughs> so it will we'll open up the second quarter here with Central Catholic on their own 44-yard line. It'll be third down and seven. Big time play for the defiance defense right here. Huge third down for this defiance defense. Get after that quarterback. And they are going to bring pressure. He'll find an open receiver. It's Watson across the middle. He's got moves at the 45-40. Oh Makes a man miss inside the 35. It'll be pushed out of bounds. And a huge completion there. And you can see when they need a guy, Watson is the guy. Yeah, he definitely is there. Uh, you know, you got a quick hit pass. You got a gain of about three to five yards on the quick hit. And then you, you, J, Jalen Watson turned the rest of that into a monster game. So big play there for a first down. All the way inside the defiance to the 24-yard line. Now Watson again with it across the 25, and it'll be hit. Nice tackle there by Anthony Wilder. No mistakes. No mistakes on defense. The, just a gain of about three. And a nice open field tackle there. Second down in five now. Opening you, minute of our you can second quarter. You can definitely see the dynamic playability of the receiver, Jalen Watson. It's, yeah. it's insane to see that he's turned out, looks like 69 yards so far tonight on about 10 to 12 yards through the air. How many it's yards? Been all 69. And a reception now across the 20. He's got room. He's going into the end zone for a touchdown. 21-yard touchdown. Pass to Lavelle Stokes. As nothing flashy there. And he'll go into the end zone. And Central Catholic down the field in uh, a little over a minute. Yeah, and, and you see it quick. You know, you saw Lavelle Stokes again, same thing, quick hit pass. Immediately turning it down a juke move, a juke move, and getting right up the field for 21 and a score. We've been close on some blocks here. Let's see if they can get yeah. to this PAT. Anthony Wilder on the edge. And no, no, almost no. point after is good. And the Central Catholic Fighting Irish take the lead back. 11 minutes to go, second quarter. It's Central Catholic 21, Defiance 14, back after this on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Gallagher Stadium. Uh, Josh Bush, Brent Rotten with you as the Central Catholic Fighting Irish get a Premier Bank touchdown pass from Collins to Stokes. It goes 21 yards. That caps off a five-play drive that uh, they went 59 yards in about a minute, 55 seconds, resulting in that touchdown. That's our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary. I am probably going to run out of space on my papers here tonight. I think you have enough for scoring drives, what, about 48 or so. So, yeah, you're going to be in trouble. Did you bring two sheets? I got another one. It's not double-sided on the back. I got more in the binder. All right, ensuing kickoff now for Central Catholic. Good to have you along here tonight. What an exciting start to this game so far. It's been a riot. 21-14 Central Catholic. The kickoff will be taken at about the five yard line. This is Wilder with it out across the 25 and he'll be just kind of held on to there and he'll be brought down a nice solid return there for Anthony Wilder and the Bulldogs will have their first possession of this second quarter. They'll start at their own 27 yard line. And yeah, there's no doubt and you, you know, you look for better starting position than that but that's where you're at, you're at the 27 yard line. Now on offense, you're looking to make up for that mistake. Uh, last possession. I'm sorry, they scored last possession. They did score Good last Lord. possession. I, I'm two possessions back. And uh, <laughs> it's easy yeah. to get behind today. It, it is. It is. They're they're running together. You you look to at least counter punch again tonight. Counter punch that offensive score for Central Catholic here. Come back with one of your own. Hopefully, eat up a little clock too. Two backs in the backfield for the Bulldogs. As Rodenberger comes in motion, it'll be Brogan Castile with it. He'll be hit at the line and dropped. No gain on first down. 
and the Central Catholic defense uh, shifting. Yeah, we'll say hello to Thomas, Sean, Becky, Isaac, all watching tonight. Good to have you along. So here no, we go. Yeah, with no gain there, again, that's a, a, getting a little off schedule. You need to go and try to pick up at least five to seven yards here, get yourself into third and manageable. Looking to throw, Brez hesitates. There we and go. Now he's got a wide open receiver across the 40, 45. It's Jordan Wright out near midfield, and a big gain there, and a big first down for the Bulldogs. Gain of 20, head fake from Brez a little bit there, a little bit bite from the defender. Jordan Wright, who's played huge tonight, makes a catch, moves up the field, gets 21. Big, big play, pass completion there for the Bulldogs, and they keep the ball. Number one, then the clock is spinning under 10 minutes to go before halftime. Defiance looking to kind of cut the pace down a little bit here. They're not going to play at that same level that Central Catholic is playing at. Well, I think you want to try and keep their offense Man, just keep on the sideline as much. They're watching the office. Well, they're Castillo with it now. He's got a hole across the 45, and he's hit and dropped. Gains about six or seven. Nice, strong first down run there again for Brogan Castillo. Brogan's the back we're, handle, or we're handing off to, and we're, we're using tonight heavy. You know, nine carries so far. He's been pretty effective, though, 48 yards. So has, has a loss of three, has a no gain, a, a two-yard gain in there. Other than that, has been pretty consistent at about six yards a carry. So Brogan's doing fine tonight. He's maintaining them, keeping them on schedule. Brings them across the midfield now, second and short. Staying on schedule at second down and three are the Bulldogs. Central Catholic, I'm, I'm surprised at the amount of cushion that the Central Catholic is giving Defiance. They single cover everything. And Wilder with it takes a big shot on that far sideline. Pops right back up, gonna have enough for a Defiance first down. Yeah, hanging out there, uh, getting about six, seven yards and, and taking a little bit of punishment at the end. Anthony Wilder, the tough kid's gonna get right back up, ask for the ball again probably. Well, you talked about some of these seniors and the potential for their last game. Anthony Wilder, Man. a junior. Right. He's looking to keep this going Good. for those teammates because yes. that's the kind of kid that the, he is. And that's what he's doing out there. And he, he's going to play at 110 every single night regardless. But you see it tonight. He wants that football as much as he can touch it. Four receivers, two to either side. Zippel back to pass, and he'll dump it off to Castillo across the 40, Look 35, still going, chugging those legs. He'll finally yeah, be hit and dropped out about the 30-yard line. Surprised they didn't stop the play on forward progress there, but finished off by the Central Catholic defense. Looks like about a gain of seven, and a nice solid job there by Brez Ziffel making that quick decision, finding that uh, that uh, secondary option with uh, Brogan Castillo out of the backfield. And like you know, we talk about a lot. That's just an extension of the run there, getting that little bubble screen pass out. You do a fake to the opposite side, you get it out quick, draw a couple defenders over that way. And with Brogan, you turn, well, again, what is normally a two to three to four yard gain into about seven yards. Second and three at the 30 yard line. Going for there a ball, go. back corner of the end the zone. And he's gonna get have a top. jump ball and it'll be incomplete. Looking for Jordan Wright. Tremendous coverage over there. Little hand yeah, combat the there, nothing over the top it looked like from here. So, little battle in there. Good pass by Brez, just didn't exactly link up. Maybe a little bit sooner. Yeah, um, yeah, a little bit quicker, maybe a tad over the top is what you were looking for there. But, you know, again, safe pass, and no deflection. Was able to get to a 50-50 ball, and Jordan Wright has the potential to win those most of the time. When you're set up by that with the, the good, nice first down Yeah, you can gain. take that now chance. You're, you're third and three. Third and three, third and manageable. And, if you know Defiance and what this offense is, its, it's core is based on that run game. They've been throwing the ball a little bit more than anticipated tonight. So it'll be interesting to see. Another thing we haven't seen is Brez get down, carry that football, and run with it. That could be the wrinkle we see now. Third down and three at the 30-yard line. It'll be Castillo with it. He's going to be hit and drop. No gain. So it'll bring up a fourth down and three. Interesting spot here for Coach Cooper. You're, you're, too far to, you're too far you to punt. This. Yeah, you go for this. There's right. not a whole lot to, Excuse me, it's too far to kick a field goal, too close to punt. Yeah, I think right there, that was the third down play, was given it to Brogan, who, Brogan, who you can feel consistently can move the ball forward there. They knew they were going to be in the two down offense here at third and three, now brings up fourth and three. And we've got a timeout, timeout Bulldogs. 
Kristen Stanton, attorney law timeout. We'll take it with them. 7.04 to go before halftime. The Irish 21, Bulldogs 14. More to come after this on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Gallagher Stadium. Josh Bush, Brent Rod with you here on this regional quarterfinal matchup between the Bulldogs and the Central Catholic Fighting Irish. Big, big play here for the Bulldogs yeah. offense. Fourth down and three at the Central Catholic 30-yard line. Yeah, this is going to change a lot of this game in terms of picking this up and the potential to go down and score, only allowing what, you know, with seven minutes to go until half. You want to get into halftime at a one-possession game at worst. And so in order to do that, you really need to try to score here. We'll see what they draw up on fourth down. It'll There's be a, a quarterback That's run a for play. Ziffel across the 30, 25, oh, he's 20. In. He's got yeah. more room, touchdown. and he'll go touchdown. into the end zone for a touchdown. Brad yes. Ziffel with a touchdown, a 30-yard run, and a fourth down play. I hate to say it, Brent, but uh, you called that. That is, is what they've been hanging on a lot this year. They like to bring up Brez, utilize his legs, long strides, good gains, and able to get it there. And when, when you line that up on third down and run with Brogan, you set up that next play. Inside handoff, break out, and run out to the sidelines. I didn't think there would be that much green there. Brez broke the corner, gone to the house. Point after on the way, and it is, Ooh. looks like partially blocked maybe. No and it will be no good. No so the point good. after is no good. Your score right now, <laughs> the Irish of Central Catholic 21, Bulldogs in defiance 20, 6.53 to go before halftime. We're back after this on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Gallagher Stadium. Josh Bush, Brent Rotten with you as Defiance uh, gets uh, six more on the board. Our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary, eight plays, 73 yards. It took a solid four minutes off the clock as uh, Brez Ziffel caps it off with a fourth down, 30-yard touchdown run. The point after it was no good, and the Bulldogs trail Central Catholic 21-20. So Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary, a Premier Bank 30-yard touchdown run for Brez Ziffel, and uh, nicely done by this offense here to capitalize, not just to convert on fourth down, but turn that into six points. Yeah, and, and that's what you, you, know, you want to do is you want to counteract that punch, counteract that touchdown, and able to pull another trick out. Again, not utilizing Brez's legs at all tonight. As of late, we've seen it a little bit less, but when you pull it out at the right time, hit that edge and go, Brez is gone, and here we go. Little trickeration right. again, and... It'll be fallen on by Central Catholic just across midfield, nothing crazy. There, there isn't many situations where you look at something and say, I think doing an onside kick on every kickoff and not getting it is still a benefit. Yeah. Because we've seen twice getting the ball kind of downfield. you got to look, Coach Cooper's not kicking at the deep men at all tonight, and he hasn't. And the, the up men have been the ones returning the kick. So I think you get those back five, six, seven guys, and any of them can house it at any moment. It's smart to just kick away and let your defense go out there and try to capitalize on their mistakes. So the Central Catholic offense back on the field at their own 48-yard line. It's, It'll be Watson with it, and he crazy. goes across the 45. There's we a hold. hold. We got a hold. This is coming here. back. We got a hold coming. Yep. There's a penalty. If it stands, it's a 52-yard touchdown pass. But I believe this one is coming back. The celebration will be short-lived. Yeah, I think they. One official had his eyes up here as I was also holding Josh during that play. So I think we're gonna we'll see who what the call, call is officially. So they. <laughs> So it'll be first down and 20 now, as that is a, how is that a spot foul? It's, this changes every week. It does, it seems to go back and forth. 
Yeah, it does. It kind of seems to depend on this, the staff you get and who you're playing. So I first guess. down and 13 know. now. First and 13, seven yards difference. But, you know, when Maybe you're, when you're negating a major touchdown, I think at this point we'll, we'll take, take that. It. <laughs> so first down and 13 now at the 46-yard line. Obviously, Defiance is going to have to have some answer for Jalen Watson because he is right now showing why he is committed yeah. to the University of Iowa. Yeah, elite playmaker, and there's no doubt. Braswell with it. He'll be hit across the 50 and dropped. And he is hit by number 12, Antonio Lopez. Antonio Lopez with the stop. They've definitely done a good job bottling up Braswell so far. That's a tough one. Um, four carries, 17 yards, eight of them on that carry. So a big carry there. They've held him in check so far. Second and six now. Inside Defiance territory at the 48. Braswell will fall forward to the 45. It will be a manageable third down now for the Fighting Irish. It's going to be about third and, like third and three or so. Um, yeah, big big play here. At this point on mid, near midfield, you need to stop here. At the 45. Collins looking to throw, nowhere to go. Pressure is there. Oh no. He's getting held again. No call. He's got Holt. He's got a first down across the 40, excuse me, 35. And it'll be a first down run for Collins. I think the first time he's tucked it and run, but a lot of a lot of jersey pulling there on this left sat on the left tackle. Yeah, it, very patient runner. If you if you're holding the ball that long, dancing around back behind the line of scrimmage, you're probably going to see a hold occur, maybe two or three there. And, but, you know, if they don't throw the flags, they don't throw the flags. Bottom line is you got to get up there in space and tackle the ball carrier. First down out the 32-yard line. It'll be Broswell with it across the 30. Gain of about five. Wrapped up and tackled there. Joey Robinson coming in for the Bulldogs, who's been a major, major player on this defensive squad for the Bulldogs throughout the season. Yeah, they've had great players on both sides of the football. The defense has been unbelievable all year, and I think a big part of that has been the development and the play of Joey Robinson. As this season has went and progressed, he has gotten better every single week. It'll be an end around now with Watson, and he'll be tripped up as he gets near the 25-yard line. Penalty marker is fl uh, flies in at the end. And Watson's still on the turf. Going to be helped up. We got going here. It looks like it's away from the play. Yeah, it's dropped back there. So they're walking it back. Okay. So it's a hold. So, so it's going to be second and 12. Is that about right? So. Apparent, apparently it is a spot of the foul foul now. Yeah, I mean, so let's see, we got a second, <laughs> second and 12, second 13 here. I think it's second and 12 at the 34. I think they got it right now. <laughs> no, they just got second and 34 at the 12. I'm sorry. I didn't catch that at first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is, the, the scoreboard is not right. And it has been all night. It's been kind of fun. That play clock down to five. Central Catholic all sorts of uh, confused here. They're going to burn yeah. a timeout. Kristen Stanton, attorney at law timeout. 4.20 to go before halftime. 21-20 Irish back after this on DCTV Sports. Welcome back to Gallagher Stadium here in Toledo Central Catholic High School. Josh Bush, Brent Rout with you. I want to say hello to everybody on our YouTube stream tonight. If you're watching, if you have not done so, like and subscribe our page, our, our YouTube channel. It's what the cool kids do. And uh, we've got more sports coming for you this winter. A lot of folks turning, tuning in tonight in what is a one-point game. Uh, a little bit more than 44 minutes to go before halftime here at Central Catholic. 
Second and 12 at the 34. It'll be Broswell with it. He's got a hole off the right side. He's got room to go. It'll be hit and dropped near the first down. He's going to get a very generous spot. He was chopped down at the 25, and they're going to give it to him all the way down at the 21-yard line. Wow. It'll be a first down for Central Catholic. I thought he had him. I thought he hit the turf about three yards shy of that first down, and they'll that give it to him. That is a generous spot. And it'll be Broswell with it again. He'll just kind of make some room there up the middle. And Brent, I know you're going to be surprised by this. We've got 41 points on the board. We're under four minutes to go before uh, halftime, and we are in our Stanball Jewelers red zone for the first time tonight. Man, so it's 1-0 red zone opportunities to punt so far. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's been one of those games. It's just been big play after big play. Drives a lengthy drive tonight is three yeah. minutes. So, <laughs> and it'll be the second man through now. This time, as the speedy Tyler Morgan, the junior, will be all the way down near the one yard line. He'll have another Central Catholic first down. Knocking on the goal line now in our Stanball Jewelers red zone, one yard out. It'll be the second man through again, and it'll be a touchdown for the Irish, Tyler Morgan. Will go in from a yard out, and the Fighting Irish will put six more on the board. Yeah, not a lot you can do there. I mean, just it, really out athletic is what it feels like on that entire possession. But, you know, a couple opportunities there to make stops, to make big plays, and you see a little fancy footwork, a little dancing here, and they're getting around edges and getting big gains. Point after attempt on the way, and it will be getting close to those. Up and through. Point after is good. Central Catholic 28, Defiance 20, 312 to go before halftime. We're back after this on DC TV Sports. Get our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary for Central Catholic. Eight plays. It covers 52 yards in four and a half minutes. It's a Morgan, a Morgan one yard touchdown run. Point after is good. He gets that uh, one yard touchdown, one yard Premier Bank touchdown run. And the uh, point after good 28 20. That's our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary. For those of you watching, we apologize. Our scoreboard on the TV actually runs off the scoreboard here and. Uh, <laughs> they haven't been the they've had the they, they've had the yards to go and the downs backwards so uh, bear with us our crews doing the best they can to, to get that rectified but we'll try to keep you updated as well because <laughs> it is just what it is yeah yeah it's it's one of those things that we utilize it a little bit for reference from time to time and it's not coming into play too much <laughs> so we'll see maybe the Maybe the uh, oh, onside, oh, onside kick. kick. Will it go, go 10, 10 yards? Will it go 10 yards? Nope. And it does. It just goes oh, 10 yards. Right the and they cover it, recover it. That was a beautiful kick. And nobody saw that one coming. Now they're going to. Tremendous kick so there. Uh, a the officials, the are, officials are discussing whether or not it actually went. Well, it's a matter of. It's a matter of if it was touched. I, I mean, if they had touched it prior to getting there, no, but it didn't look like they touched it from here. Three minutes, two timeouts. Oof. So the Central Catholic Scurry. offense will come back onto the field after the onside kick. 3.09 to go in the ball game. Here's the point in the game where you really need, desperately need a turnover. Um, at worst, maybe you could roll a penalty into a long third down or something to make a big play. And they'll look to throw in first down, getting it out to Watson. He stumbles a little bit at midfield, and he'll be hit and dropped. Antonio Lopez, Eli Howard, excuse me, Antonio Lopez, and uh, Joey Robinson will wrap him up and bring him down. Short game there for Watson on first down. Terry Collins, the quarterback there, has tonight eight of eight passing for 106 yards. Perfect on the night so far. 
Back to pass again, looking for Watson across the middle. All kinds of pressure coming. He'll be flushed out of the pocket. He'll be hit as he throws. It's complete across the 40, gonna, down near the 30-yard line. They're going to add, add, add on to that. Preston Freisel. They're going to add on to that. Put that flag back there. Yes. Oh! Thought it was, I thought they hit the quarterback. Yeah. So That's wipe big, off. big time. Wipe off the gain on first down, or excuse me, on second down, and that will move it all the way back. I tried to catch that one there on the replay. It looked like they did get him a pretty good lick, but there's also a lineman holding somebody. Wow. So that'll move it back inside Central Catholic Territory to the 44-yard line. It'll bring up what I believe is a second down and 16. Well, second down and 17, 17. actually. Yeah. So if second down and 17, I think the scoreboard's there almost go. right. There, yeah, they got, got it. it, they got it. Collins back to pass, all kinds of time. He's gonna go across the middle and it'll be in and out of the Here hands, the looking for yeah, Preston Freisel again. It falls incomplete and a big play there by the defend, defender on coverage, Eli Howerton, who comes up limping a little bit. They'll check him out and get Jordan Wright in the defense for the Bulldogs. Brings, yeah, you're going to bring up a third and 17 here. You get the penalty, which puts him into third and long with the big play, uh, you know, with the big incompletion. So this is one way if you're not going to get a turnover, and they're, they're making big play after big play, is get them in third and long and, and then play a little, little, little bit soft and maybe try not to give up as much here with two and a half minutes, get that ball back. Central Catholic will burn another timeout. It's a Kristen Stanton attorney law timeout. We'll take it with them. 2.21 to go before halftime. The Irish 28, the Bulldogs 20. We're back after this on DCTV Sports. Welcome back to Gallagher Stadium, Fighting Irish 28-20 lead over the Bulldogs. Uh, thanks to everybody tuning in tonight on our YouTube channel. I, got, and look at that. We got Clay Torres says, go dogs from Seattle, Washington, so the upper northwest. I also saw, looks like Paul Mallet is not out here supporting his son-in-law. He's at home watching, maybe. <laughs> um, we have All right, third down at 17 now, 44-yard line. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. That's the biggest thing here. <laughs> Watson in motion. He checks back to this near sideline. Snap out of his hand a little there bit, and then it will be incomplete. And you see what happens there, Brent. A little bit of rough going there on the snap. Collins it, it, not able to handle it, and it forces an early throw there incomplete. And that's what you need when you had a guy who was rolling along eight of eight pass and mentioned it, and then you get two incompletions. So I think you're wanting credit here. I, a little bit. So did they run a fake here? They, uh, no, they're kicking this. That's the receiver. That's wow. 17. Holy punt. All the way back to the one. He's got to stay away from that there goal go. line. Anthony Wilder across the 10. 15, 20, and he's still on his feet out near the 30-yard line. You know, you know, a big return there huge. for Anthony Wilder because what, I'm sitting here thinking, don't get hit in your end zone. We, we, we don't field punts back there. Try not to field that ball. That ball hung up there so high and was driven back. I think Anthony Wilder was initially looking at this is going to land around the 15 to 12-yard line. Ended up going all the way carrying back to the three and turned that what could be brutal mistake into carrying it out to the 27. Gives yourself some formidable space. You know, so the, the way we, Bulldogs got 2.02 two, two to go on the clock, two, two timeouts. timeouts. That's a lot of time and enough here for what we've done tonight. So we're looking for big plays, and we've seen the trick plays with the halfback pass. We've seen a long bomb pass play from Brez Zipfel. We've seen Brez utilize his legs and run. We've seen Brogan Castillo be consistent on the ground. Jordan Wright is going to be a kid you're going to want to watch here. Anthony Wilder, as he is on every play. Garrett Rodenberger as well. So you have playmakers on our side of the ball, too. Let's see if we can get them rolling together. Play clock at five. they got to get going here. Don't want to burn a timeout when you don't need to. Play clock at one, and they'll burn the timeout. Man. Coming out of the uh, punt, you don't want to burn a timeout there. Kristen Stanton, attorney law timeout. Bulldogs take it 28-20. We're back after this on DCTV Sports.
Welcome back to Gallagher Stadium. As Josh Bush, Brent Rodden, we've kind of squeezed our way in up here at the... Uh, I believe we would outside. call this the big squeeze yeah, up we, here. We got a big squeeze yeah. up here in the uh, little platform. This is actually kind of nice. A nice, nice night out here. Back to TV time down here. Curb your enthusiasm now on. First down and 10 for the Bulldogs. Three receivers to the near sideline to the right of Brett Ziffel. He have a single back in the backfield. And they'll fake it on first down, and they'll throw complete to this near sideline oh. as he's smoked across the head. Wow, what a violent tackle there. TJ Kellemeyer able to... Let's play some football. Able to hang on to his socks. <laughs> and his helmet stayed on. I mean, his, his neck stayed, everything stayed attached there. Second and nine, gain of one there, looking to throw. Pressure coming, and he'll be oh, no. oh, almost you. intercepted. A and Brez tried to force something there. Didn't see the defender in his yeah, face. And then definitely I think block, blocked out a little bit. Brogan Castillo was over there in that kind of that area somewhere, but incomplete pass. Big here for the Bulldogs is it stops the clock with a minute 29 to go. If you can't convert here, you're going to be punting back to the Central Catholic, and we've seen them get down the field in a hurry. Big play, big play. Here. Minute 29 to go, third and nine. It'll like be a it. delay Draw. and nowhere to go for Brogan. He'll be hit and thrown to the ground. Forward, forward progress stopped and eventually thrown to the ground by Central Catholic. I think they're going to burn their final timeout. So the Fighting Irish burn their third and final timeout. Minute 22 to go in the uh, ball game, or excuse me, in the first half of the ball game. 28-20, it's a Kristen Stanton attorney at law timeout. We're back after this on DC TV Sports. Fourth down here for the Bulldogs. Fourth and 10 at their own 28-yard line as Brez Ziffel will stand in to punt, and they look like they're coming after this yeah, one. Yeah, they're going to. you got to get this ball out clean and get it up there. They applied pressure on the last punt, almost got to him, and he gets this one away. High spiraling bounce. kick, ah, well, and it will take a central Catholic bounce right. and stop at about the 44-yard line. So a three and out for the Defiance offense and a chance here for Central Catholic to get down the field. Yeah, the opportunities here, you have a one possession game at 28-20. We're gonna be receiving the ball coming out of half. You have a minute 11, one timeout remaining. No, no I'm timeouts. sorry, no timeouts remaining for the Irish. So what you wanna do here is obviously get out of here with no points. You leave it out of one possession game, which is the goal going in here. Get the football to start the half and start a fresh game. I feel like I've got Booger McFarland up here. I don't, not, a, not the best comp, <laughs> but shout out to Connie Sierra. Said she's watching from Frederick, Maryland, watching her nephew, Joey Robinson. Outstanding. That's awesome. Minute 11 to go, Central Catholic offense on the field and a first and 10 looking to pass is Collins and he'll go far sideline. It's complete and it'll be falling forward. Should have enough for a first down. They're going to get an easy 10 there, maybe 11. Game 11, yep. I didn't see who was on the 10 was on the reception. Excuse me. It's Lavelle Stokes. Final minute of the opening half. Clock spinning. Collins throws, complete left side, spin move, and first down, and complete to Sherrod Vaughn, Vaughn, excuse me. And that'll be enough for a first down. Clock stops momentarily. Oh, they got it spinning already. 45 seconds in rolling. Big, big the, play here. Barely had the ball set. And it'll be near sideline, caught. He stays in bounds, and he's going to be hit close to the first down. That's complete to uh, Preston Freisel. It's good enough for a fighting Irish first down as they're trying to move quickly down here. 
Clock will spend 30 seconds in rolling before halftime. 28-20, Fighting Irish trying to tack onto it before halftime. He'll come near sideline. Fryza will just fall forward and out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. And that'll be another trip inside our Stamball Jewelers red zone tonight for the Central Catholic Fighting Irish. They'll have it second down and four at the 17-yard line, not the... Okay, they got it fixed. Yeah, there we go. It's second, four, 17, 21. Yeah. Our scoreboard on the yeah. screen feeds off the scoreboard <laughs> in the stadium. So it's... Anyways, 21 seconds to go here in uh, the first half. All kinds of pressure coming. Get after him. White jerseys getting moved all over the place. Uh -huh. They won't call the hold again, and he'll be stopped short of the goal line at the one. Ten seconds. Ten seconds to go. It's going to be a first down. I saw a white jersey about a foot yeah. off the shoulder pad. You know, they're, they're, it's been that game. And are they trying to stop the clock here? The penalty marker fall, flies in. Clock, clock was running. Was was anybody set? I don't know that they were set. Is that a fault? Oh, give us a false start. An offensive pick. Picking nope. it up. They're going to wave it well, off. Well, you got to start that clock then. If you're waving it off, yep, the clock's got to start. Yeah, start that clock. Roll the clock. The clock's got to start spinning here. Why yeah. is the clock not moving? That, that's there we go. That, that's now they've, got, they, they've that, given signals for the clock to be spinning. That's an inadvertent timeout. I mean, this is ridiculous. He and fumbles the fumble, football. Fumble. Fumbles the They're football on the one-yard line. All right, we got and to stop. I believe if no flags come out, the clock. I believe Defiance has the football. Okay, we got 1.6 seconds. And another fumble, second turnover of the night. And Central Catholic is now minus two in this turnover battle here. A huge one. No turnover is That's, is good, right? But no, no, the, this the, is the worst spot it could have been for Central Catholic. Yeah, I mean, looking at it from that standpoint. Um, you're in a rough spot for defiance here to, to be safe. We'll take under, the, under center. We, we will take that. Yeah. yeah, we will take that turnover. But you almost wish they recovered that ball just short of the goal line, and this thing runs dry. We got 1.6 seconds. No play is going to be made here. You're going to need the quarterback to push it forward, um, but make sure you stay out of that stinking end zone there. When you're ducked down, you're right at the locked in, right at the one. So you got a little bit of room, but not a whole lot. So. First down and 10 for defiance. This is a tough situation here. You cannot be pushed. About? It was not a spike. Are they? I think somebody's trying to say that they spiked the football. But no, they they botched. They clearly yeah. botched. They that did it on the play a, before and got an extra down. So first, 1.6 seconds here. Brez will stand in shotgun formation with two backs in the backfield. <sighs> Is he going to roll out and just chuck it? I mean, roll out to the sideline and chuck it. Flag him. Probably should get off the field, coach. I guess if you're in your 20th playoff appearance, you <laughs> and he's still down outside the coach's box. And a first down and 10 now for Defiance and Ziffel looking to throw and out of the end zone. He'll just toss it Good over play. the head Good of play. his intended target. Let's It'll fall incomplete. incomplete so the end of the first half. how about that half? Well, we've reached halftime. <laughs> <laughs> And what a half it was, our Midwest Community Federal Credit Union halftime show. Welcome to it. Halftime here at Gallagher Stadium in Toledo, at Toledo Central Catholic. It's the Irish 28 and the Bulldogs 20. Brent, uh, that was as about of an exciting half of football as we've seen all year. I tell you, you know, we knew tonight coming in we were going to have to play our best game, and really it felt as though we were going to have to play our best game to hang around. And we've capitalized on mistakes. You have to look at the from the standpoint of we've had – not very good from the standpoint of covering on special teams. We've given up, we've allowed an onside kick for them. So some things to clean up. We have not played a perfect game, but at that same time, you're hanging in this game, and this coaching staff is still going ape on the officials. In a very classy move that you see out of a team like this constantly. That was crazy. Wow. I mean, that's intense. But you're in position now with a one possession game, an uncomfortable position for the Irish. Going into half, only up by eight. So Defiance gets the ball to come out. We got a ball game. 
Well, uh, halftime here, 28-20 uh, Fighting Irish uh, leading the Defiance. Uh, let's uh, send it down on the field. The Defiance High School Marching Band of Class will be doing their halftime performance. We'll get a couple of selections from the Defiance High School Marching Band of Class. We're at halftime, 28-20 Fighting Irish leading the Bulldogs here on DC TV.
percussion. That's right, I said including the percussion. Please enjoy the band as they present Maroon 5 single, Lucky Strike. Welcome back to Gallagher Stadium here at Central Catholic High School. Josh Bush, Brett Rott with you as uh, got a little bit of the uh, Defiance High School marching band's halftime show here tonight. And we're uh, enjoying it uh, from uh, <laughs> our perch up here. And i got to be honest with you, Brent, there's no, uh, there, there's no reflection off the glass or the glaring of the lights yeah, in the you glass. Know and it's, it's different. Actually, it's actually kind of nice, a little open air feel here for us uh, tonight. Uh, but uh, good to have you along. It's halftime here at Gallagher Stadium, Fighting Irish of Central Catholic 28 and the Defiance Bulldogs 20. Uh, Brent uh, looking at some scoring. Honestly, the opening kickoff, we thought, oh, boy, what's going to happen here tonight? Uh, the opening kickoff went 65 yards for a <laughs> touchdown. A defiance answered with that uh, tight end around pass to from uh, Rodenberger to Stockman. Awesome play. For a touchdown. That kickoff was returned for a touchdown. Uh, then a, a, a punt. Broswell gets uh, into the end zone. Or, excuse me, Broswell fumbles. Yep. Uh, defiance will turn that into points as Zipfel uh, throws one to Rodenberger. And then uh, Stokes got a 20 yard, 21 yard pass. Zipfel had a 30, 30 yard run. Morgan had a one yard run. And at the end of the half, it comes down here. Central Catholic gets all the way down to the one yard line and they fumble. Uh, and uh, we stay at 28 20 here uh, at the halftime score. Yeah, you know, and, and if you really break it down to bare bones and what we watched in the first half there, we're fortunate at this point to be in a one possession game. They've drove the ball down the field. They've been dynamic. In terms of Central Catholic, been dynamic on special teams. They've made mistakes. They've turned the ball over a couple times. They've been 
you know, they've had many more penalties and yardage than we have. We've played a, a more fundamentally sound game. They've beat us in terms of big plays, but at the same special time, teams. Yeah, and, and you're hanging in the game. And when you run into a team like this that is clearly state bound, that's what you have to do to knock them out is you have to play at their level, beat them at three or four factions of the game that you can beat them at and hang everywhere else. So Defiance is going to get the ball here to start the second half. And it's still a one possession game. If they can move down the field at some point quickly and score, we are at a dead heat, dead even game into the third quarter. Something did not probably did probably didn't see coming yeah i mean I, there's no moral victories in this especially at this point at halftime but if you would have walked up here when we started tonight before kickoff and said i'd take a eight point game at halftime we'd all well, have I, taken I, that well i think if you i think if you would have taken a poll as uh if you if you would have taken a poll of those coming in through the uh, front gate which we're not sure how he got through the front gate but wow uh, <laughs> holy moly that's that, been we, a minute listen we saw the lights gleaming off Jeez, your, wow. your head a little bit ago but uh i thought uh, there was a wasn't there a rule with schools and, and smooth <laughs> it's been a while we used to keep him in the studio so you know wasn't allowed Dude. out here uh 28 20 fighting out at halftime let's take another time out here in our Midwest Community Federal Credit Union halftime show. When we come back, we'll talk statistical numbers and we'll get you set for the second half here tonight at Gallagher Stadium. It's Toledo Central Catholic 28, Defiance 20. We're back after this on DC TV Sports. Welcome Excuse back me. to uh, halftime here at Gallagher Stadium. Central Catholic 28-20 lead over the Defiance Bulldogs uh, as we are rolling through halftime here. Uh, Brent, let's get some uh, statistical numbers uh, from that first half uh, uh, as uh, we uh, look at, uh, let's, let's start with the Bulldogs side of things here for uh, this first half. Pretty good first half for Defiance carrying the football. Brogan Castillo has led the charge 11 carries, 49 yards. Anthony Wilder has tacked on three additional carries for 10 yards. Brez Zipfel, two carries, 23 yards, had a big seven yard loss and then a 30 yard touchdown run was the big play. So, you know, beautiful from that standpoint. Jordan Wright also added an end around for nine yards in there. Passing the ball, Brez has been pretty effective tonight, passing 11 times throwing the football here, seven for 11 for 84 yards is throwing a touchdown. And he's mixed it up with all of his receivers. Two catches for 14 yards for Anthony Wilder. One catch, Cohen Stockman. That came from Garrett Rodenberger for a 37-yard touchdown. Broken Castillo's two snags for 20 yards. Brady Borton, a catch for six. Uh, Garrett Rodenberger, who threw the touchdown, also has one catch for a touchdown of 29 yards. Jordan Wright, 21, and TJ Kellemeyer adding the catch as well. And like we said, with Brez passing the football there, 84 yards and a touchdown. Garrett Rodenberger, perfect quarterback rating tonight. One of one, 37 yards, and a TD pass. Getting waves from the band, Brett. Oh, look at that. She doesn't, that would be she doesn't, she doesn't know it, but she was a star of that halftime show. Yeah, she so. was a star of that halftime show, <laughs> you know. It's a good half there for the, the Bulldogs. Uh, honestly, uh, we talked about, you know, getting the offense going here tonight, uh, something they've kind of struggled with a little bit, <laughs> and they've done a nice job so far in this first half. Really have mixed it up, and, and you've seen, we talked about them needing to get the offense going. The defense has been there pretty much all year. It's been a little bit of a reverse script. The offense has looked pretty good tonight, fundamentally have been good not shooting themselves in the foot too often. Defensively, I mean, it's been a special teams mishap here and there, but the offense for Central Catholic has moved right down the field, so we've got to make some adjustments on defense and continue to be a little bit unpredictable on offense. Take a look at some uh, numbers there for the uh, Fighting Irish. Looking at those backs, we thought we were going to see a big game from uh, Marquand Braswell. We have so far eight carries, 43 yards. He's been pretty good. Tyler Morgan adding two. Uh, for 17 and a touchdown. Lavelle Stokes, one carry for 21 yards, also a touchdown. Collins has two carries for 29 yards. Looking at the passing game, Terry Collins, and you know, is a near perfect first half there passing the football. He's 12 of 14 for 148 yards. He has thrown a touchdown. And at the same time, he has mixed up a little bit with his receivers, primarily using four guys. Lavelle Stokes with one catch for 11 yards. Sherrod Vaughn, two catches, 14 yards. Preston Frizzell, who's also the punter, has a phenomenal leg. Uh, three, yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. Three catches, 30 yards has been pretty consistent as a big target. But the big guy tonight, the Iowa recruit, Jalen Watson, 72 yards on five catches, kept him at bay. 
but when you get him the ball, and they've had a lot of short fields tonight, so it's eaten up yeah. that stat yardage a little bit, but you get him the ball in space, and you can just see. You need, you need three or four guys. You, you really need to bubble him up and try to get him contained. So, um, it, for Defiance, they've done exactly what they needed to do to hang in the football game. They're going to have to take that first half and play a better second half to close this game out and get a win in advance. Well, looking at some uh, other scores from around Northwest Ohio, Division 5, Region 18, Liberty Center. Maybe not as good of a game as I thought, 28 nothing at halftime. <laughs> Patrick Henry twirling, trailing uh, 14 to 12 yeah, over Arlington. We knew that's going to be a game. Coldwater and Archbold, ready for this? Let's go. Tied at 14 Ooh. at halftime. That's not your the rankings go out the window in that game, I'll tell you right now. Lima Central Catholic is leading Crestview 16 to 14 at half. Columbus Grove on top of Black River 19 to 6. Uh, Macomb. Where, where is that? Uh, well, it's on the... Uh, leaderboard right now it's also 43 in my, it's to nothing also in my pocket i think your back pocket yeah it's in my back pocket i think 43 to nothing over eden at halftime uh pandora gilboa getting uh hammered by hopewell loudon 27 to 3. arlington uh leading patrick henry 14 to 12. glenville 34 to 7 over napoleon Anthony Wayne, how about this? I really thought this was going to be a good game. 31-7 over Avon Lake. That game still, according to this, in the second quarter. So. Not your old man's Avon Lake squad, apparently. You know? But now, Brent, uh, <laughs> what most people don't realize is that... Ringer. <laughs> It's been fun this year. Hasn't no, it's it? been a blast yeah. getting to go back and go back to the years past where we got to do this for a good old time and have these guys on board with us. You know, they make us look really good. Can't say enough about the production crew and what Except they've for Alex. done. Alex, he couldn't a get a shot up yeah, here. That Alex can't, but you know, he's got some work to do. We got Will here, who, folks, I could fill you in real quick. Uh, no, he, don't. <laughs> just, you know, he needs All right. help. Keys for the second half here. Uh, let's start. Uh, obviously, it's Toledo Central Catholic. <laughs> they haven't been in this spot in, in I would say, quite a, quite too often in this season. Yeah. Probably, to, to be fair, in the last couple of seasons, um, only up by eight at halftime. I tell you, and it's clear that they're uncomfortable. You saw how the end of that half shook out um, with them being in, an un in a little bit of a compromised position, at least from their standpoint. So keys in the second half for Defiance, I think it's paramount to come out, get this ball, and score. Yeah. Um, I don't know that you need to then necessarily go for two right away. It, maybe it, it, that's up to Coach Cooper and how confident he's going to feel when we get down there and score that touchdown. But you need to get out there and get that score. And again, you got the momentum of stopping them via their mistake at the goal line to end the half. They were, you know, 12 inches from punching it in and having seven more points. Yeah. I mean, it was it was goal at the one, but really that was yeah probably goal at the half. I'm and I was, I was incredibly paranoid with where that ball was spotted on the goal line in that 1.6 seconds and to see Brez just calm cool and collected as can be roll out nice and slow pop a pass over out of bounds I mean a little play like that that looks like absolutely nothing is huge you make one slight mistake there and it's just like there was no turnover they're going to walk into the end zone yep. Good to have you along here tonight. 28-20, Fighting Irish leading the uh, Bulldogs. Let's take our final time out here on our Midwest Community Federal Credit Union halftime show. When we come back, we'll get you the second half action. Good to have you along here tonight. Thanks for joining us live on our YouTube channel here on DC TV Sports. Final 30 seconds of our halftime here as uh, the teams are out getting their final stretches in here at uh, Gallagher Stadium in uh, downtown Toledo. Big Chewy Nerds. Jeff Tackett, never short on snacks, has Big Chewy Nerds, you know, things my, really? my child would eat. I'm going to enjoy Don't some. crunch those in the microphone. Shout out Ryan Gilland. Yeah. Um, I'm, he does know my baton skills, has seen them. I will get out there and show them off. We can get you down on the field level if you'd like. I don't know. 
text Jordan and see if she can bring one of those batons over from the band. She most definitely could, couldn't she? She could. Let's do it. We'll get you one. We'll get you some of those light-up ones. <laughs> the ones I set on fire? <laughs> no, you're, you, we're not setting you on fire. Yeah, there's so. waivers and stuff involved that I'm not signing. <laughs> Well, we uh, hope to join. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can tell you to join us next Friday night. We've got a half of football to play. The winner of this game will move on, and they'll take on the winner of the Mansfield Senior and Rocky River game that is going on tonight as well in uh, Division Three, Region 10. So we'll see. we got a, we got a, a uh, I'll tell you what, that was one of the uh, most exciting halves of football that I've seen in a while. We've called some fun games. We've called some ugly games. So every, and everything else in between. And I would put this right up there, you know, with one of the more exciting games and one, one of the uh, more. I mean, really unexpected. Sure, maybe not in our locker room, but it certainly was for me. And you know, it's nice to see the Bulldogs hang here, get these guys back on their heels a little bit. The biggest key is going to be the adjustments that they make at halftime. I want to see what Toledo Central Catholic does. They aren't in this position very often. Pretty Final sour season. nerds, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, yeah. they're healthy. Wow. Oh, it explains a lot about Jeff now. You said don't crack those into the microphone. That wasn't the nerd. Nope. That was my tooth. <laughs> <laughs> well, then once you got past that, it was like tart. Yeah, yeah, yeah very yeah. hard. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was tart, sour. Jeff, I don't know what happened. There. He got a bunch of those when he was trick-or-treating this week, last week. All right, so here we go. We are getting set for second half football here from Gallagher Stadium in downtown Toledo. I got to imagine the uh, conversation in the Central Catholic locker room was probably not the most pleasant. Uh, if we uh, can kind of gauge it off of uh, the way the first half ended <laughs> on the uh, sidelines down here, not happy. But uh, obviously, when you're the Number one seed. You don't want to see a half with two turnovers. You don't. You don't, you don't yeah. want to see them close out a half. Um, you know, with uh, you know, with that turnover, uh, the fumble on the one yard line, your second turnover of it, the half. It's been it's been timely for defiance, and it's been huge. But at the same time, you know, a good defensive team is putting them in positions. They botched that fumble on the very first play down there and, sure. got, and got nearly the same objective out of it where, you know, it was the same, the same deal. And finally, on the second time, came to fruition with the fumble recovery for defiance. So the Bulldogs will be receiving the second half kickoff here and we'll start this second half on offense. Obviously, we already saw an onside kick here. You have to be aware if you're defiance of any kind of trickery that uh, Central Catholic may try to get at you here because, um, you know, I think it just really caught the Bulldogs sleeping there in that first yeah, quarter. Yeah, a, a little bit. And it was one of those perfect squibs where, you know, they're able to surround the football as it just rolls upfield, good spin on it. So you do want to watch it. I think uh, you don't see any really adjustments from defiance, not putting an extra guy up there to plug that middle at all. But, you know, I would assume as soon as that ball is kicked to that point, if they do it again, you're going to see a bum rush to that spot from those five guys. So here we are. It's our FM Bank opening kickoff of the second half. A low line drive kick. It'll be taken by Castillo across the 20, 25. Lowers the shoulder, falls forward out near the 30-yard line. And that's where the Bulldogs offense will come onto the field for the first time here in this second half. And they'll have it first down and 10 at their own 29-yard line. I believe the scoreboard says 27, but it is, in fact, the 29. Yeah, looks like the 29. So here we go, second half. Bulldogs trail by eight. Josh Bush, Brent Rowden with you here on DCTV Sports. Glad to have you along live on YouTube here tonight. Wilder end around on first down. He's got room across the 30. Big one. 35, it'll be pushed out of bounds out near the first down marker. I think he's going to be a little bit shy, but a solid start to the to the uh, drive for Defiance. Yeah, it looks like they're going to mark him a full yard short here. So nine yard carry, Anthony Wilder on the end around coming out to start the, the half. And you love seeing that play. They like to get Anthony involved. They like to utilize his speed, especially and get him to the edge. If he gets wrapped up in the middle, it can look bad at times. But man, when he's able to bounce out and go, 
just like that right there. That's a guaranteed seven, eight, nine yards. He'll get right to the sideline and make that space. So second down and one out the 38. And Brogan Castillo with all kinds of room into Central Catholic territory across midfield. He'll have a first down for the Bulldogs and then some. Give him about 16 yards. That's about spot on, 16. You see defines here on two two plays, 20, 28. They started 25. on their 29. 25. I mean, that's splitting it up there. That's nice 12 and a half yard average coming out of half. So you love seeing big plays. You love carrying the ball a couple times, utilizing your run game and moving the ball across midfield. Clock spinning initially uh, in this quarter as well. Near the 11 minute mark, it'll be Castillo with it up the middle. He's got room to go across the 40, 35, and he'll just dive forward. He'll have enough for another defiance first down. And you know, the uh, offensive line doing a great job of making space in the middle for Brogan Castillo. And when you get the big fella going downhill. I'll tell you what, you're seeing the C's open up for Brogan. Last two plays on, on pretty known run plays um, that were coming, opened right up, hit that hole, found some space. We need to make this a regular thing the rest of the night. Clock spinning initially er, as well, and that's huge for this Defiance team. Yeah. You got to do what you can to keep that Central Catholic offense on the sideline watching TV. Yep, and there's no doubt score points. Uh, they're going to get the back there. It's going to be on Anthony, I think. It's going to false start. I believe that's maybe one of our first. Yeah, it is. Maybe one of our first penalties of the night. We're all right, though, with that one. If you're going to get that penalty, get it here on first down. So first down and 15 now, the pre-snap penalty. But Clock like, will spin here. Yeah, like you said, Josh, the the, no, the most important thing here is constantly counterpunch the point total, but at the same time, if you can hold on to that football and keep that dynamic offense off the field, it's only a big time bonus. They'll fake the inside give. Gert Rodenberg will have it out near the 30 yard line and he'll fall forward. Play. That's a football play right there. And a big catch there for Garrett Rodenberger. And uh, what happens when you have an offense that draws you in with those inside runs, Brent? You fake the inside give to Brogan, and uh, everybody crashes down on that. You spin out of it, and uh, Garrett Rodenberger is wide open from his tight end spot. Nailed it. And a big time play there, getting a quick, simple play, pass play, easy completion. You're going to complete 95% of the time. Turns that first and 15 into second and three. A nice pickup of 12 for Garrett Rodenberger. That was the star of our halftime show up here now. Asking for money. Hand off there to Castillo. He's going to move it forward right at that first down marker. So a first down run there for Castillo. Not much going. See if he's going to be short. Yeah, it looks like maybe. We're going to move him. Nope, they're, gonna, nope, they're moving him. Nope, they're going to give him a first down. Needed three, got three on the dot. So moved it there as we're approaching the old good, red zone. good spot. Getting closer and closer. Where do they end up when they get down there? In the end zone. Well, that's old pay dirt. Ooh. <laughs> it's pay dirt down there. I like it. <laughs> Clock spinning near the nine minute mark. First and 10 Bulldogs at, their own, at the uh, Central Catholic 24. Castillo will go right side and not a lot of space there. Well, Chased out of bounds. Well, let's say he stayed inbounds. Gain of a yard or two, not much there for Castillo. Nice job by Central Catholic, stretched that play all the way to the sideline and just nowhere to go for the big fella. Strong contain there, moving it, pushing the sideline, going to that side of the field where he had a little extra space, uh, but when they closed it off there, Forrest Brogan into a position where he just had to move the ball forward, get a yard and get out. So second down and nine for the Bulldogs. Get him a uniform. Shotgun formation, Brez back to throw. He'll come near sideline for Wilder, hit as he caught it. They're gonna say incomplete. And he is absolutely smashed on this near sideline. Kevin Arnold, That's who, had the, who had the big uh, personal foul in that first half, lays the wood here. Lays that wood, there's no doubt. Hard hit to the top there. Um, you know, Anthony Wilder a little slow getting up, but popped right up, got back to that huddle. More disappointed in the drop than he is in the fact that he got hit. Third Clear nine. the cobwebs out a little bit, third down and nine. You're definitely in two down territory here, so you don't need nine here, but you want to try to pick up at least half this, maybe more. 
Ziffel back to pass. He'll go to the far sideline. It'll be like caught that. and out of bounds. That was hauled in by Brady Borton. And it'll be inside our Stamball Jewelers red zone tonight for the Bulldogs. Might be their first trip inside the red zone. Yeah, it, it, it's not been a whole lot. Uh, it's been big play after big play after big play. So again, oh, converted on fourth down in yeah, the first half, for which a was also yard four and, four pass. And fourth and three. Are they going to roll out the other side with uh, Brez? I would think no here, but look and see what 24 does. Two backs in the backfield, Rodenberger in motion, and they will fake it. Brez will keep it. He's going to go this uh, left oh, side. He's, he's going to be hit at the 20 and dropped. Big pursuit there by uh, Kevin Arnold, and it will be a turnover on downs. And uh, you're too close, or you're too far for a field goal. To be honest, yeah. you haven't even tried a field goal all year because you just got your kicker a couple of weeks ago. Well, too short for a punt. And we're, field goals ain't going to win this game anyway. I mean, and that's really the bottom line: is you need you need seven there, you need maybe eight if you want to go for it. At this point, it doesn't matter. Um, you take a chance there. You got half over half of what you needed on third down. You got yourself into a manageable position. Position ran a similar play that they did on fourth down earlier. And hats off to the defense. They read that. For defiance, about four and a half minutes spun off that clock. If there's a silver lining here, Something. defiance will, or excuse me, Central Catholic will be Croswell with it. Excuse me, Broswell with it on the first down carry, and he'll turn the Jets on. He's going to have it up for a fighting average first down at the 30 yard line. Braswell's definitely played well contained. He did have a fumble in the first half, but you knows carry, carried the ball for 54 yards here on nine carries, so healthy carries. And Braswell with it again across the 30. 35 will be hit and dropped after a game of about seven. And Central Catholic will quickly get to the line as the yeah, ball is spotted. They look to the sideline and they go. In terms of pace, they, they, they've got this down and that's a dynamic part of the offense moving so quickly. Another red shirt team we saw earlier in the season moved a little quick too. Oh my, you know it. That wasn't even close to this. No, uh -uh. And it's Watson with it. He's got space on the 40. And it'll be pushed out of bounds as he hits into Defiance territory. And wow, that's just what an athlete. Phenomenally fast, safe with the ball. Just a heck of a player. You say he's pushed out right at midfield. So they'll set the ball at the 50-yard line. First down and 10 for Central Catholic in a three-receiver set, two to this near sideline. Got to know where number one's at, but it'll be Broswell with it. And he'll go left side across the 40. He's going to go all the way to the house. 25. Oh, we got oh, it. Oh, nope. Excuse me. Gra Gary great, Rodenberger. Great chase tackle there. You're right. It looked like he was gone. Didn't have quite that second gear there. Rodenberger able to hit a good angle there and at least stop him a little bit short. They've made mistakes down here. So that, that's key right here is force them to run another player or two. They're liable to drop that foot. Great job by Garrett Rodenberger. Phenomenal. I, I didn't think he had the Phenomenal. angle. All the way to the five. It's a gain of 45 and a first down for Central Catholic. First and goal inside the Red zone again, our Stable Jewelers red zone. And it's Tyler Morgan on the first down carry. Gain of four there, Broswell on that 45 yard carry did eclipse the 100 yard mark for the night. So second down and goal now at the one yard line. A little confusion on the play that's getting called in here for Central Catholic. And it will be the second man through, he's up and over. Did he get in? He did. Tyler Morgan, his second one-yard touchdown run of the night. He seems to be their go-to guy down in the red zone. Yeah, they love to utilize Browswell to get down there, and they like Morgan in his strength and ability, especially there like that, using that jump play to jump over. Short yardage downs near the goal line, they're using Morgan definitely. Point after attempt on the way for Central Catholic. Snap is there and almost blocked again, but it'll be through and good. Point after is good, and the Central Catholic Fighting Irish tack on seven more. Central Catholic 35, Defiance 20, 547 to go in the third quarter. We're back after this on DC TV Sports.
Welcome back. Let's get our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary, a drive that took uh, 80 yards and took just a minute 45 off the clock. Went six plays, capped off by a Tyler Morgan one-yard touchdown run. Point after was good, and it's a 35 to 20 lead now for Central Catholic with 547 to go here in our third quarter. It's our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary and uh, Tyler Morgan, his second Premier Bank one yard touchdown run of the night. And the Ben Badeau break defense uh, for defiance, you know, had worked out a little bit there in the first half, but uh, again, quickly not scoring on the first possession and Central Catholic getting the football marching right down the field. Uh, you're, you're in a spot now where you, you need a touchdown. Castillo takes it on the run. He it's goes out across the 35 to the 40. Good starting spot. And making the initial hit is number 27. And Defiance will have really good starting field position here at their own 41-yard line. And a first down and 10. And I agree here, Brent, if you can't score, you run the risk of Central Catholic getting down the field quickly again. Yeah. And uh, before you know it, you're getting into that yep. three possession game and 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 that's a battle that's uh, going to be a hard one here against the top ranked team yeah they haven't done a whole lot in terms of stopping the central catholic offense at all tonight so you've got to chase touchdowns and hope for turnovers so a first down toss to jordan Wright. he's got space across the 40 he'll go to the 45 out near midfield and he's upended and nice solid run on first down jordan by Wright. sophomore jordan Wright. You love to see it at a nine-yard carry in the uh, first half, seven-yard carry there. Mitchell, also has added in a catch Catholic. tonight for 21 yards, so it it's made some big plays for the sophomore there. Second and three, manageable spot here for the Bulldogs offense. Just shy of midfield at their own 49-yard line. Four receivers set, three to this near sideline. And Castillo in the backfield, they'll throw it to... Anthony Wilder at the Central Catholic 45 will be wrapped up and brought down. He's going to have enough for a defiance first down and a nice pitch and catch there for the Bulldogs. Zipful to Wilder. You like to see it. You know, you like to get your hands in your playmakers and the hands of your playmakers. They're needing three yards, picked up about six, seven. So able to move the ball up the field, get that first down, move those sticks. So first down now in Central Catholic territory at the 44 yard line of the Fighting Irish. Very vocal home side of the uh, yeah, stands I'll, I'll here. I'll be honest. I mean, decent amount of fans, but they're not quiet. They ain't shy. Nice amount of fans for Defiance here as oh. well. And Brogan Castillo <laughs> just gets smoked. We can't do face mask on that thing. Hmm. It's the second one of those that we've seen. Number Good neck tackles. Right and right behind it I believe in wrestling, they call that a clothesline. <laughs> I don't think that's in wrestling, Josh. I think that's in life. <laughs> uh, yeah. So a two-yard loss there for Brogan Castillo just kind of ran into a wrecking ball. And some of these big physical players for Central Catholic showing uh, showing what they can do. Yeah, and that they are. I mean, they're a phenomenally athletic team. Just making plays. Tough team, there's no doubt. 345 and rolling third quarter. It'll be a fake to... Jordan Wright and got a hit on the quarterback a there. Big Lake hit, hit on the quarterback. As Ziffel was flattened after the pass, it'll fall incomplete. He was looking for Jordan Wright. All kinds of pressure coming. And the I'll be honest, you have a potential for grounding there. Um, well, that Jordan was, Wright was in the area. I mean, that was a lineman closer. But are we going to get holding? Wow. So Brez Ziffel gets flattened after the pass and we get a holding call against Defiance. Interesting. It has definitely been an interesting night of uh, calls here yeah, tonight. I mean, they, I mean, they, there's, it's been consistent at I least. I was gonna say, I was just gonna say that, at least they've been <laughs> consistent. Really, that's all you want. You want them to be really good both ways or if you're gonna be bad, be bad both ways. 3.36 to go, Second third quarter. 22. And a huge, huge play here for Defiance. They're yeah. going to chunk some of this yardage back. Yeah, you got to start taking chances, get the ball downfield. You got a little confusion here. Play clock five sitting at five. Five seconds at five. Yep. And Ziffel's going to go down the far sideline. He's side got line. space. He's got a. Oh, my. What a pass. 
out of the hands of Antonio Lopez. I'll tell you what, beautiful ball there out of the hands for Brez Zipfel. Led Antonio Lopez, just let him a touch too much. So third down and 22 now for this Defiance offense. We'll see what the... In the typical circumstance here on third and 22 at the spot on the field, you may draw a play, get a couple yards, punt the football, and be done. Um, you're chasing touchdowns here. I think you throw the football deep here, and you try to pick this up or at least get it to a manageable fourth. All right, so here we go. A little bit of a miscommunication again for the offense. Got a little again. bit of space in the slot. Third down and 22. Looking to throw is Ziffel. Pressure coming. He's going to be hit, and... It's got to get back to the line of scrimmage. It was close. Real close. There is no, there is no tackle box in high school football. No. So I mean, it, outside the tackle box is not a thing. It was close. The officials are talking about it here. Leave it down. Leave it in your pocket. He's going to throw it. Hey, he's throwing it. Jeez. Wow. And that'll be a loss of down penalty as well. Yeah. I mean, it was close. I mean, it is what it is. It's about, it looked like he, he was probably a half yard short getting it back in, in a situation like there. Flag probably warranted. And so a fourth down now and 27, fourth down and a mile as Ziffel stands in to punt. So the Central Catholic will stand at about the yard to gain for the first down. Yeah, no doubt. Isn't that crazy? And the snap high. Pressure coming. He just gets it. It's partially like it blocked. And it'll go out of bounds at the Defiance 35-yard line. As that punt was, I didn't see who got a paw yeah, on it. Yeah, there's that definitely a, a, guys a couple, in there. a fingertip tipped it there, was able to get... 15 yards um, in terms of distance roughly from the line of scrimmage. So obviously not ideal that entire possession after moving the ball and, and getting a couple first downs, especially on the ground, a little bit through the air. Um, kind of backfired there, a couple penalties, shoots you in the foot. You don't get the, the hit on the quarterback call and in effect turns into a holding call, kind of spiraled from there. So you're seeing that momentum bubble and, and it's starting to really grow for Central Catholic, if you're Defiance, you need a turnover yep. here. Huge series for this Defiance defense. First down and 10 for Central Catholic. It'll be uh, Tyler Morgan with it on first trying down. Trying to rip He's that ball out. They're trying. Morgan Inside the 30 on first down. That's off to that kid for not going down. I will say this. The uh, officials have not been quick to yeah, I mean, blow it on uh, forward progress. And, and that's probably helping us a little more than you think. It's given an opportunity to get defenders there and to stick their hands on the football. So gain of eight, second down and two. Morgan is the back in the backfield behind Collins, and he'll come quickly to this near sideline to Watson, who makes a man miss. Nope, he's going to be wrapped up go. and brought down inside the 25. Antonio Lopez, give credit there. That's I mean, he was Watson was trying to juke him, make yeah. him miss, and uh, Antonio Lopez able to get a hold of the leg and until help could come by. You know how I feel about players that were 12. They're ball players. So you see a big play by Antonio Lopez, 12, the barber there, taking care of business, making a good tackle. And wipe that off, holding on the offense. Oh, there we go. There we go. So another we'll holding that. penalty against the Central Catholic offense. I believe that's five or six holding penalties all against that offensive line tonight. So second down now, and I believe about 13 all the way back at the If there was a point you could use 39. a loss on a play, it's this play. So second down now, and it'll be Morgan with it again on that left side. He's got this, but he's quick. Man, he's fast. <laughs> he is so fast. <laughs> Wow. He's the other guy. <laughs> yeah. There. He's the other guy. Yeah, he's the junior yeah. that comes in. We actually haven't seen uh, we haven't seen Broswell for a bit here. No, yeah, he did have the 45-yard run, kind of bounced yeah. after that, and really hasn't been around. So third down and seven now at the 33-yard line. We've got a stoppage again. They're going to reset the play clock.
final two minutes of the third quarter. Central Catholic resets, looks at the sideline for the play, and they'll bring some extra help down on this sideline, does Defiance. And they're gonna throw, looking for the underneath there we go. man, and he'll be chopped down. Nice job there oh, by Antonio oh, Lopez. Oh, that pass oh, caught oh, by oh, Dominic oh, Spinazzi. Oh, and he will be short of the first down. It'll be fourth down now for this Central Catholic offense. Defiance has got to be ready to go here. They will come quickly to the line. And there's a wide open receiver in the slot to the left. Nobody covering No, he's got him. coverage. He's got bottom coverage. Oh, excuse me, there he is. Yeah, he, kind of hiding there. We're going to have a timeout. Let's see who took it. Timeout. So the Central Catholic uh, Fighting Irish take their first time out of the half. We'll take it with them. It's a Kristen Stanton attorney at law timeout. Three, uh, 101 to go here in the third quarter, 35-20. Central Catholic leading the Bulldogs here on DCTV Sports. Welcome back, final minute of this third quarter here on DC TV Sports. Big fourth down here, Will. Fourth down and three for the Fighting Irish, and a big third, fourth down here for this Defiance defense. As Central Catholic will line up, it'll be Tyler Morgan in the backfield behind Collins. Man, this and we're is gonna know, gotta know where Watson huge is. Huge play, huge play. He's in the slot to the left. Buckle on down on him. and three, Everybody's and it'll be Morgan line. with it. He's inside the 30, he's got the first house. down, he's got a touchdown. touchdown as Morgan will go into the end zone, a 29 yard touchdown run. And you can see the speedy Football junior. By Tyler Morgan. Yeah, they have a, a tailback there in Braswell who has 25 touchdowns this year. Tonight has 106 yards, no touchdowns. Tyler Morgan is three, right? Point after coming here for the Fighting Irish. And the snap is there, and they almost got that one. Yeah, it's been every They're working play. On one. I, I tell think, you what, and that, they missed it. That's hats off there, uh, Central Catholic. They have the timing down perfect. They get that kickoff about a millisecond before yeah. Wilder's able to get there and get a hand on it. Pushed it to the right, and it's no good. So the Toledo Central Catholic Fighting Irish 41, and the Defiance Bulldogs 20. We're back after this on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Gallagher Stadium here at Toledo Central Catholic. It's a 29-yard touchdown, a uh, Premier Bank touchdown run for Tyler Morgan. Our Mark Mutz Ford scoring drive summary, it took just four plays, and it went uh, 36 yards, took about three minutes off the clock, and the 29-yard touchdown run for Tyler Morgan. Point after was no good, 41-20. Fighting Irish leading it here with 53 seconds to go before half or before the uh, fourth quarter, and uh, that is our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary. Another low bouncer up Broadway is yeah, Brogan's had a few more returns tonight than he has all year. I feel like we're watching Groundhog Day. Yeah, it really he? is. It really is. He just kind of falls forward across the 40, and that's where we start. Grabs it, picks up 8-10, falls forward. Hey yo! Wow. It is first down. Part of more cowbell. Got Part of the tailgating contingency down there. So the Bulldogs have it. Ooh, they brought own. they brought that tailgate inside. Have it at their own 41 yard line with 49 seconds to go before this fourth quarter and a must score situation here for Defiance. And you're pushing now. Yeah, I mean, at, at towards th that 30 th three, points. Three score game, I mean, it, it's it's react now. 
And it'll Orange be Castillo Cook. with it on first down across the 45. And a solid run there for Brogan Castillo on first down. Five yards there for Brogan. You know, staying, again, staying on schedule. You're at a breaking point in this game. So let's make plays. Let's, let's go down fighting. Clock spinning. I'm going to run one more play, I think. Yeah. They're about almost timed up, but. It's about dead even. Second and five wouldn't what is likely to be the final play of the third quarter. Three receivers to the far sideline for Zipfel. Throw it deep. And he's looking to go up the middle. He's got pressure from behind, and he'll just float one down that far sideline. And Wilder tries mm. to run under it, and he got pushed out of bounds. He helped him up. Wow. Anthony Wilder was laid out on the sideline before the ball got there, but no penalty called. 4.4 seconds to go before our – I thought that was going to be the final play. But it's tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> clock stops there on the incomplete you, pass. You like that – I mean, you like that spot on second and five to try deep ball there. So, yeah, just where you're out on the field near, near midfield, you can make that play, and it brings you into third and manageable. So – See what they do here on third down, as this will likely flip the quarter. Likely flip the quarter. Is that like in em the area of holding? Empty. Yes, in the area of holding. And we got all kinds of movement here. They're going to call that on them? Or are they going to call movement on us? Yeah, they're calling, no, they're it, on calling it on them. I thought so, too. That's going to be a first down. So that should be, yep, that'll move the chains. And it'll be a first down for Defiance. First down and 10 now inside Toledo Central Catholic territory. Now with the 49 of the Fighting Irish. 49, there, there we go. Empty so again. Defiance will stay in that five wide re receiver set. Just three down linemen. They'll show blitz from this far side. Brez will tuck it and go across the 45, and he'll slide all the way inside the 40. Should have enough for another Defiance first down. I've got about 12 there. And that'll bring us to the end of the third quarter. And it, it's a good one here tonight at Central Catholic. Bulldogs trailing the Fighting Irish 41-24th quarter is next here on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to uh, Gallagher Stadium here at Toledo Central Catholic as we are down to our final 12 minutes. And for the Bulldogs, Brent, they're going to have to battle for this final 12 minutes. Uh, but they're starting to put some things together here on this offensive series. They've been pretty successful tonight on offense. They have a, had a couple times where they haven't been able to finish off drives. Obviously, they've ran into a couple ugly plays. But haven't shot themselves in the foot, haven't been penalized a whole lot. So the ability for them to get down the field here sure. is, is imperative. You do have enough time on the clock with, with a full set of timeouts. If you can punch one in here, we're at least still dancing a little bit. Lights are getting dim, but we're still playing. So a first down and 10 coming off the quarter flip and uh, the first down run there for Bruz Zipfel. A nice job there kind of recognizing that the middle was open there, yeah. just three down linemen, tucked it and went. Empty, when you go empty there and, and you see uh, guys break down field, you know, if that opens up, you can take the gain and you got a lot of turf to carry there. So first down at 10 is Castillo will switch sides of the backfield with Zipfel, looking to throw, pressure coming, he'll heave this one down that far oh, no. sideline, it'll be out of bounds, and probably better that yep. it was out of bounds yep. because that was... I don't know if he kind of got hit or obstructed on the throw, but that one yeah. floated up there, a little bit of a wobbly duck up there. and A lot of pressure, so able to get the ball off there, get it out of bounds, uh, survive and go to the next play. Clock stops, 11.53 to go in the ball game. 41-20 Bulldogs trailing the Fighting Irish of Central Catholic and have given the top-seeded team a run for their money here tonight in this regional quarterfinal. Yeah, certainly have. Have played a really good game tonight, and, and they've had a couple times, I mean, a couple instances where a, a break goes this way, a break goes that way, and it's even closer than it is right now. So, so far, you know, you're still hanging, you're still playing. Brez will tuck it and try to make something here, and he's going to be tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Nice job there. Michael Bastetta. Excuse me, Basita. Basita. 
So a third down and 10 now for this defiance offense and a must have third down here, or at least, let me phrase that, got to get at least five or six Yeah, get here. some positive yards here. Because again, I believe you're in four down territory sure. here. Sure, the rest of the way I'm going to fathom. Play comes in from the sideline. Play clock at 10. Wilder in motion. There we go. Double reverse and they no to go. That. And they knew exactly what was coming. Yeah, we've seen that one tonight. So Roadberger will lose big yardage back to the 48-yard line. And now with a fourth down and a little over 20, I would imagine maybe you change your mindset here and try to pin the Fighting Irish deep. Yeah, I mean, you're at 4th and 20. There's not a whole lot going on here. Here's where you get rid of the football and try to move forward. So Ziffel back to punt for Defiance, standing at his own 39-yard line. Snap is there, and the punt nearly blocked. It'll be, it'll hit inside the 20. And it will take a defiance roll down near the 10 yard line. Nice punt there yeah. for Brez Ziffel. Good, good punt for Brez. Got a little defiance bounce there. Knocking it down near the 10 yard line, right at maybe the 11. So good starting spot for us on defense. And if there's any time to get a stop, it's right now. So 10.08 to go in the ball game. And Central Catholic will take over with the football at their own 11 yard line and a. Another must-have series here for this Bulldogs defense. Yeah, there definitely is. There's no doubt. I mean, right now you got to make plays. We've been hanging on it, hanging on it, hanging on it. At some point, you got to make a play with a 20, 21 point game, three possession game. Ten minutes still. There's enough time, but you're going to need a turnover here. You're going to need one quick, and you're going to need to turn it into points right away. So first down for the Fighting Irish at their own 11-yard line, and it will be. Tyler Morgan, Tyler Morgan is, uh, number 17, with the football Robinson. on first down. Not a lot of space there for the junior running back. I've got about three, four yards there. Looks like four. And now pace is kind of slowed down here for Central Catholic. They are taking their time. Yep. You can tell. Yeah, they're there. They've got that. I mean, they would have run two plays yeah, in this right. amount of time. <laughs> Yeah, 12 seconds spun off, and they're just now lining up. That You're right. They're taking about six seconds between plays. Play clock at 10, and they'll snap it. It'll be Morgan with it again on second down. He's got space out near the 20, 25-yard line, pushed That's forward good. near the 30-yard line. And it'll be a first down run for the Fighting Irish. And number 32. I'll be honest with you. If he's what's to come next year, they, yeah. you know, obviously the uh, starting the uh, starting running back in uh, Marquan Broswell yep. is a senior. Yep. Um, Tyler Morgan, a junior. So they're they're both man. <clears throat> both incredibly dynamic, but man, you see what you get out of Tyler Morgan is a lot different than what you get out of Broswell. With Morgan's got the the quick ability, the ability to move um, on his feet and pick up yards quick. It'll be Morgan again with it across the 30 and smart move there. He kind of cut it back and avoided that sideline, stays inbounds. He's got a flag down. Marker that far sideline. We'll sort it out here and see what got it a is. Hold coming. Another holding penalty against Central Catholic. So, uh, Brett, we've seen a ton of holding penalties against this offensive line. and. It's a big, strong, physical offensive line with kids that are going to play at the next level. And uh, yeah. if you're Coach Dempsey, you can't be happy with the amount of yellow laundry out there. Tonight. No, you, you've seen a lot of penalties. You've seen them turn the ball over. So they're going to have to clean things up if they want to make a deep run. Very talented, very good. But you do get a little bit of a sense that they have some raw capabilities where they're still at the point of they're not consistent in, in every facet of the game. So they'll have to clean some things up. They've played phenomenal tonight. And, and they're going to be a team that definitely goes deep. Uh, but definitely, you know, some things you can work on. Broswell in the backfield now, but they'll run the end around with Watson. Speedy turns on the Jets across the 30. Still going, pushed out of bounds. And Larry Robinson runs him out for the time. Wow. What a play. I mean, that uh, he's 
he's shifty. He's got a whole other gear. Yeah, it, it's it's you know you you see him touch the ball and instantly you kind of cringe because you know he's turning it into some positive yardage. Great football player there. Second and five now at the 36-yard line. It'll be Broswell with it. He'll be hit and stopped at the line of scrimmage. Nice job there by Cohen Stockman to get in there and trip him up at the line. And a uh, bring up a third down now for this Central Catholic offense. Yeah, Broswell there back into the game. So gets a couple yards and immediately hops right off the field. I'm kind of wondering if he might have tweaked something. Yeah, I he, don't know. He's limping a little bit here. I wonder if he... Did something earlier? We've seen we've seen Tyler Morgan for a majority of and the probably the half, end of the yeah. probably end of the first half even. Yeah, I mean, with as effective as Morgan's been, I see no reason to even change that if you have any kind of dinged up injury. So Morgan will have it, and he'll have the first down. Penalty marker flies again, and he'll go out near the midfield stride. But we'll see what happens. It's in that area of holding again. Let's see what we get here. It was a third and three enough for a first down, so we'll see what the penalty does. And another holding penalty. So that'll bring it back 10 yards. It'll be third down and 13 now. My guess would be you need to know where Watson's at right now. Yeah, you watch, <laughs> you definitely watch where one's hanging out. Maybe stick a guy or two or four on him. So he's stacked to the far sideline. He'll come in motion. And they're going to look to go the other way away from him. And Balls Morgan incomplete. dropped it. Yep, forward so, pass, so. so we're going to go fourth 14. And a penalty marker comes in late. And I think there's some extracurriculars on the sideline there. We might. Wow. Sideline, what do we got? I think it's going to be on number 50. It's going to go, it's going to be a dead ball foul, I think, against. Dead ball, personal foul on the offense, number seven. Oh, excuse seven. me, number seven. So I thought, uh, I saw 50 come out of there. Yeah, I saw I you there. I, I saw what you were saying. Yeah. So another mm -hmm. penalty mm -hmm. against Central Catholic. Seven's Morgan, isn't it? Yep. So that was the guy that had the incomplete pass. He yeah. dropped it, and then so punting from the uh, end zone here, and it will be blocked. Oh It'll be blocked, and uh, they'll Can't advance that. There you go. That's our ball right there. Strip him down right there. So the punt is blocked. Tremendous job getting in there and getting in the backfield and getting that that kick blocked. Looks I didn't like see the number that was back I there. believe it was Abel Rubio and uh, I can't tell. I can't get a back number. Three would be Kellemeyer. Three, seven. That's Stockman. Yep, Stockman. Stockman and Rubio were the two got, that got in there. So a huge play there for Defiance, and they'll take over 7.02 to go here. They're going to have it first down and 10. Yeah, short at field the here. Central Catholic 21 yard line. With seven minutes, I think, I mean, man, if you could punch one in quick here, you could, you could, you could at least there. make them sweat a little bit. I think the key here is you got to get it quick. Yeah, I, and I do too. I, yeah, you can't run four minutes, half the time off the clock, and punch it in. So Still the, need three. So, and when you get the ball here, this is where you can get it in one or two plays, hopefully. So the officials are now. I think that, isn't that where that ball is dead? It's not where it's recovered, correct? I think they had a. I think they had the wrong football. I think they had a central. They're, I think they're taking the football out, and each team has their own footballs. So I saw a ball come out towards this near sideline. Okay. Line, and the wall, yep, ball came were, in from yep, the other side. They're running line, it so. off right now. You're right. So. And they're going to move this. No, they're going to. They're going to move this to the 18 yard yeah, line. Yeah. I think the pick up there at the 18 and the advance of three yards. I just think that's where it's recovered from, and that kills the play. So right inside our Stamball Jewelers red zone at the 18 yard line for the Bulldogs, and it'll be Castillo with it up the middle. He'll fall forward inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. And we've got an injured. Central Catholic player I'm trying to see who that might be. 
So let's take a timeout for the injury. 6.47 to go in this ball game. Defiance trails Central Catholic 41-20. We're back after this on DCTV Sports. Welcome back to Central Catholic High School as uh, Jaden Mitchell walking off the field for Central Catholic. Good to see him yeah. up and uh, on his own power come to the sideline. and Definitely has popped up pretty quick there after we went to timeout and was able to get off the field on his own power. So always good to see there. Grabbing his eye. Might have got poked in the little, eye a little bit. Uh, eye poke. A little Three Stooges. I knew a guy yeah, that liked the Three Stooges. Did you really? Yeah. I, did, I, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Six and a half to go in the ball game. Second down and six from the 14-yard line in the Stamball Jewelers red zone. And it'll be a toss sweep to this near sideline. and Face mask. That's got to be a face mask 36 this 36 flags came out on that point. <laughs> As Anthony Wilder, <laughs> and I believe this. <laughs> I mean. Coming in to make play. We've seen that same tackle three other times tonight. At attempted decapitation. That should be a foul, right? That was really, huh. So that'll be an automatic first down. Yeah, yeah automatic first down on those every time. So. so they'll mark it all the way down inside the 10 the to the seven, seven, six, seven, eight. They don't know. So. Eight, First out of goal seven, at the seven. Just, it's like throwing darts at a dartboard. Pick a board. spot. So first down and goal now at the seven-yard line for Defiance inside our Stamball Jewelers red zone as we are about halfway home in this fourth quarter and maybe need to move a little bit quicker if you're here this Defiance offense. Clock continues to spin. Motion again, and they'll fake it inside. They're going to go to the back corner of the end zone, and it'll be in and out of the hands right. of the Z intended pass. receiver. Nice coverage on that far side. He was looking for Jordan Wright. Yeah, there's good coverage there. Victor Singleton Jr., a that, sophomore. Rock solid coverage there, a little bit of a jump ball action. Good pass by Brez. Put it right in a spot to at least make it a 50-50 ball. So yep. that's what you want there. That's the point of that play. You trust that Jordan Wright's going to go up and get it. Singleton had good coverage there and was able to knock it away. Second down and goal now for the Bulldogs. Battling the top-seeded Fighting Irish of Central Catholic here in this fourth quarter. Motion and they'll roll to the right back to the left and they will be Ooh, not enough Hit before the ball got there <laughs> was Antonio Lopez with technically a fall <laughs> Technically <laughs> That's correct So wow. Well nonetheless never no, no matter what happens in this final 553 if you're defiance you have to be super proud of how this game has gone and to be honest Brent how this entire season has gone yeah it, uh, they've they've knocked off some some uh monkeys off the back if you will have. some long losing streaks to some teams this year and and kind of jumping some hurdles and making progress that we hear coach cooper yeah. talking about all and the time and you talk about two of those three losses so far were by one point you know you're very close to being the four seed the three seed in, the, in this division Back to pass as Ziffel will dump it off to Castillo across the five, and he dives into the end zone touchdown. for a touchdown. There we go. And Brogan Castillo will take it into the end zone from seven yards out. It's a Premier Bank touchdown pass from Brez Ziffel to Brogan Castillo, and the Bulldogs will Never cut into that lead. I mean, they're hanging in. So that took about two minutes and 15 seconds. Yeah. You You'd like to go a little quicker, but, uh, you know, the most important part, getting that touchdown there. They're going to go for two. Makes sense. And they'll shift out. And we'll put Rodenberger in the backfield and. Timeout. We're going to have a Central Catholic timeout here. Yep. It's a Kristen Stanton attorney law timeout. Two-point conversion coming after this on DC TV Sports.
And welcome back to Toledo Central Catholic as Defiance has gotten a premier rank touchdown pass from Brez Ziffel to Brogan Castillo. And we are awaiting the two-point conversion. You are legit running out of space there on your drive chart. I told you. <laughs> That's awesome. I don't even know how many lines are on here, but I, we got, 94. <laughs> I'm running short. I can tell you that much. Down to about six. <laughs> they got the funky formation here, and it'll be short armed into the in direction of Anto Anthony Wilder. And the two point conversion is no good. So let's get our Mark Motes Ford scoring drive summary with that time out there. I had time to write it down. Yeah. It was a drive that took five plays, two minutes and 15 seconds, went in all of 18 yards, wow. and was capped off by a premier rank touchdown pass from Brez Ziffel to Brogan Castillo. The two-point conversion failed, and that brings us to our score, 41-26. And uh, for defiance, anyone looking at this score? It's been a lot closer than what, yeah, it, what it says on that scoreboard. And it's really felt like a game. You know, even really in the second half, they've obviously been outplayed in the second half. We knew we needed to come out and play even better than we did in the first half. But they've held this game close. I mean, Central Catholic, as good as they are, fundamentally make a lot of mistakes. And they've the allowed here uh, us to hang in the football game. If those are even cut in half, the score is probably dramatically different. Well, and two think you had two kickoffs returned for touchdowns in the first, yeah, first three minutes of the game. I mean, we were at 21 points. What did we say, four minutes into this game total or something like that? It's just awesome. wild to think of. 8.51 in the first quarter was the second return wow. touchdown. So ensuing kickoff coming here. Arling, or excuse me. Looks like a lot of our local teams ran into a little bit of a bus all tonight. And the Central Catholic Fighting Irish will fall on this one about the 35-yard line. Archbold trails Coldwater 28-14 that game in the fourth quarter. Liberty Center drilling here on 41-7. Yeah. They're the one. Like, they're a team that's looking like a special team again this year. Patrick Henry 40-14. to There you go. Macomb final over Eden 57-0. Napoleon trails Glenville 34 to seven. So a couple of scores there from Northwest Ohio. 544 to go in the ball game here at Toledo Central Catholic. Irish will have it first down at 10 at their own 36 yard line. Coming off the touchdown from Defiance and it'll be, oh man, man he is quick, quick, fast, good feet. And he's trying to cut back the other side and Garrett Rudenberger says, I'm done with this, and rips him down. I think he ran about 35 yards As, and gained 12. And, 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 and you got to hand it to him. That might be the prettiest 12-yard carry you see. <laughs> the footwork. It's just amazing. The spin move. That, I mean, he's got a lot of. Be an ex excellent ballerina. And here's the thing. When he gets open space, he just turns on another level, and he's gone. Yes. To go along with that footwork. Yeah, That no. is correct. And. <laughs> Now, that is. <laughs> Approaching the five minute mark here in our ball game. Good to have you along tonight. Josh Bush, Brent Routon, DC TV Sports live on YouTube. If you haven't done so, like and subscribe. Morgan with it again across midfield. Hook that ball out. Rodenberger behind him again, trying to get that ball loose. Um, short there, looked like picked up about seven, eight. That's going to put Morgan right at the 100-yard marker now. That's two tailbacks tonight for Central Catholic. Braswell sticking at 108 right now, and Morgan unofficially at 100. And again, we've seen the pace for Central Catholic cut way down here. Just kind of standing there. They're going to let this play clock go all the way down to the 15 mark. I think it was like 10 last yeah. series when they started to line up, and there we go. Play clock's at 10. They're they going to see set. snap at about four here, three. And Collins will take it, and it'll give it to Morgan again. He's got space across the 40, wrapped up, breaks the tackle inside the 35 near the 30-yard line. First down, Central Catholic. Number 12, Antonio Lopez. And it's been a clinic on the ground for Central Catholic. There's no doubt they utilized the passing game a lot in the first half and just to have not had to rely on it a whole lot in the second half. Controlling the clock, they've only thrown the ball three times in the second half. So again, very patient here. 
Well, the Fighting Irish leading 41-26. Yeah, with the time, I mean, if Defiance is not going to look to stop the clock, they're going to eat this clock up. They can almost run it right out. And they'll show blitz from that far side. Rodenberger had a chance at Morgan. He escapes it. Tyler Morgan, <laughs> tackled by number Obviously 12. Obviously some disgruntled. Central Catholic face is getting loud. Timeout, Bulldog. And Defiance will burn a timeout. The Kristen Stanton, attorney law timeout, will take it with him. 41 26, Fighting Irish. We're back after this on DC TV Sports. <laughs> So they've reset the clock to 3:23 from the t excuse me from the timeout. Yeah, they added. Looked like what must about, have been the nerds. <laughs> added about lingering. Five, five, so yeah, we ate those 45 minutes ago though, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 41:26, Fighting Irish with a second down and five at the Defiance 27-yard line. Bulldogs need a little bit of a stop here if they. Want a chance to get back into Braswell this one. back in. And he'll have it Stayed inside the smart player five. It's going to be about a yard shy of the first down. Going to bring up a... And Defiance is going to burn a timeout here. So another timeout here by the Bulldogs. Kristen Stanton, attorney law timeout, 41-26. Fighting Irish, we're back after this on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Gallagher Stadium here at Toledo Central Catholic. Josh Bush, Brent Rotten with you and the uh, entire crew. We got Zeke, we got Tim, we got John, we got Will. We brought Will. To, yeah, we did bring Will this week, didn't we? We got, who else is here? Um, Alex is here. Alex. Jeff's back here. Did I miss anybody? Um, I feel like there's more people. John, did you say John? We're the biggest crew here, I think. Anyways. Smooth yeah, pancakes. Said, well, he was here. <laughs> So third down and one, and Broswell will have the first down inside the Stanball Jewelers no red flag zone. Down. Penalty marker no comes in. Well. So hold on here. Yeah, initially a gain of about th three or four yards there. Maybe five. Oh, no, they're going to say that. Was that the ball? Maybe the ball came out. It kind of looked a little funky for a second. That right. might have been the ball marker. That or orange and yellow can't really see the, the difference over here. Corn stalks are corn the stalks. same way, yeah. Yeah, and corn stalks, you know. I don't and think we have to worry about that here. Well, I mean, looking around. No. No, I don't see any. Knock on that window. Knock, knock. Heather. Coach's box got locked. <laughs> That's trash, Joe. Can't have that. That's trash. <laughs> Collins will give to Morgan on first down, and he'll just turn the legs up near the 15-yard line, and he'll have. And we got a late flag. Had a couple guys okay, hugging, a couple guys kissing. So. We'll see who this one's on here. I think that's going to be on us. We'll see. Dead ball, personal foul. No. Oh. 60, I think. But, it, but uh, <laughs> microphone cut out a little bit there, so. And a Wi-Fi issue there or something. Signal crossed. We'll move that ball back. So all the way back out to the 29-yard like, you, you know line. You know what, Josh? They get the first down, so they move back. Yeah. You know what that does? It's more time off the clock. Knees. 
fights with it says two up there, but I believe we, we burnt two timeouts. We outs, have yeah. one, I believe. So I think they took one off of Central Catholic when it should have came off. I don't know, though. The scoreboard operator's been phenomenal tonight. Hasn't made any mistakes, so. Final two minutes of the ball game here for Defiance's defense. Going to need to force something to happen here. It'll be Morgan with it up the gut. He'll be hit, and wow. it finally Stayed goes down feet. inside the 20. Beautiful. Tyler Morgan, initially hit by Abel Rubio. In the defiance Abel defense. I mean, Andrew the, yeah, I mean, it's clear they're a little gassed, and they're doing everything they can to finish this out strong, but that running game for Central Catholic's just been dominant tonight, and I mean, they're staring down. Holy moly. Third down and 11 at the 20. Almost 300 total yards on the ground. So I mean, Central I, Catholic just, again, taking their time Yeah, here. at this point, inside a minute 20, I mean, I think they're just going to hand it off a couple more times and be out. And it will be Morgan with it inside the 20, and he will go down inside the five. To be honest, it's a smart play. Smart play, <laughs> smart play and, a, and a selfless play. I mean, if you're being honest yeah, here, it's yeah, a selfless I mean, play he, because. He clearly could have made those two yards and hopped right into the end zone. First, fourth touchdown of the night. Saw the opportunity to get down on the ground, continue to keep that clock moving. And now you can get that clock spinning and take a knee maybe two yeah, here. It looks like we're at 20. So, no, I mean, you're going to be good. Just take the knee and, you know. Yep. Tremendous job tonight from both teams, but Central Catholic, you know, made more big plays and that dynamic offense and uh, what they're able to do, you know, in open space tackling. So they, they played a good football game. Matter of fact, they played a great football game. So Central Catholic, you got to believe, will take a knee here as Collins does that back yep. near the 10 yard line. And the clock will start spinning here, and that will wrap up the, not just this game, but it'll wrap up the season for the Bulldogs of Defiance. But I'll tell you what, they have fought tooth and nail here tonight, and they battled the number one team in Toledo Central Catholic all the way down to the wire. Their final score tonight, Central Catholic, Catholic a winner by a final score of 41 to 26. We'll take a timeout. Our postgame show next here on DC TV Sports. Welcome back to Gallagher Stadium here at Toledo Central Catholic, and welcome to our Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center post-game show. Josh Bush, Brent Rod with you as the Fighting Irish of Central Catholic will move on as they beat the Bulldogs here tonight by a final score of 41 to 26. For Defiance, they fall and finish the season at eight and four for head coach Travis Cooper and a bow out in the second round of the playoffs. Uh, to be honest with you, something that get into the second round, something that hasn't happened for a little over 20 years. Yeah. Um, just a great job by this team. Great effort throughout the season. They they got, a, like we said earlier, got a couple of monkeys off the back with some of the uh, long standing losing streaks that they've had against a couple of WBL opponents. And they were able to wipe those off this year with some good wins and uh, really played a strong, strong league run. Uh, a couple of one-point losses, and then obviously ran into Salina. But, um, you know, a tremendous season for the Bulldogs. Yeah, you look at it and think last year was kind of that stepping stone season. It felt like you were taking that next step out of, you know, uh, the lower half and maybe into the middle of the pack or the upper half. And then, you know, what you want to do with building off of that is to come in this year and be better, and they did that. So a few tremendous, just really great wins. They lost a couple heartbreakers at the same time, ran into, you know, that Salina team that was just a, a tremendous defensive team. And But for Defiance, you know, hold your head up high. You won a playoff game, you came in here into a team that's just over the over the top talented, and you hung with them, you made them sweat. It's a two-possession game. Two-possession game? <laughs> Tied after one quarter. I mean, a, a loss is a loss. You lose by one, you lose by 48. It results in the same. You don't play next week, but at the same time, hey, if you can – it's a little bit of a silver lining is you made these guys sweat a little bit absolutely that's all right 
41-26, your final score. We'll take another time out here on our Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center postgame show. We'll come back. We'll check some stats. And, of course, our player of the game coming for you in just a bit as well. More to come here on DC TV Sports. And we welcome you back to Toledo Central Catholic, where the Fighting Irish are a winner tonight by a final score of 41 to 26. As uh, we look at the scoring by quarters, uh, it was tied at 14 after one. Went into halftime with uh, Central Catholic up 28 to 20. And then they kind of turned it on in that second half, 41-20 after three and 41-26, your final score here tonight. I will say this, Defiance winning the turnover battle tonight two to zero yeah, um, yeah it was played a clean game turnover wise and i think would be safe to say they won that turnover <laughs> battle as well yeah i mean the penalties were pretty out of out of control for central catholic the turnovers yeah. at two at two to zero um i we talked about that in the pregame you felt like to hang in this game and have a sh shot to win you were probably gonna have to win by two or three in the turnover battle so they were able to do that Really played a good game overall. A very undisciplined team tonight for Central Catholic. That may be a little uncommon for them. They seem to have just a boatload of penalties. But the talent's going to win out, and it did so tonight. Let's take a look at some uh, final statistical numbers here tonight. Let's start first with uh, Toledo Central Catholic. These guys were just aces on the ground tonight. Uh, first half did a lot of throwing of the football. Second half, not so much. But running the football, Marqu Marquan Braswell, Division II recruit going on to play at the next level, 116 yards. We held him out of the end zone. So for a kid with 25 touchdowns this year, got none tonight. There's a little minor win. Tyler Morgan, though, can't say about him. Unofficially 140 yards, 123 in the second half. Um, also carried it in the end zone three times for a touchdown. Lavelle Stokes, one carry, 21 yards, touchdown. Uh, Collins, the quarterback, if you include taking the knee there, had three carries, 22 yards. Watson, the big-time receiver, also had a rush for 16 yards. Passing the football, Terry Collins, you know, had a tremendous night overall, 167 passing yards through a touchdown. Um, and then you look at mixing up his receivers, he used five different ones. Dom Spinazzi, one catch, six yards. Lavelle Stokes, one catch, 11 yards. Sherrod Vaughn, two catches, 14 yards. Preston Frizzell, three catches, 30 yards. But the big man who we shut down in the second half with only 13 receiving yards. Iowa, Iowa recruit Jalen Watson tonight, six catches, 85 yards. So held him in check. And for the Bulldogs uh, side of things, uh, final stats. Yeah, really a fun night for Defiance in a lot of ways. You get to see a few different names in here doing a few different things. So Brogan Castillo, the horse on the ground, he has been all year. Uh, approached that 100-yard marker, but tonight had finished with 89 yards. Did not find the end zone there on the ground. Anthony Wilder added in four carries for 19 yards. Brez Zipfel added in five carries, 32 yards. That includes sack yardage, had a 30-yard touchdown run. Jordan Wright, a carry in each half, ended with 16 yards. Garrett Rodenberger did have a big negative play, which is nothing on that. Um, passing the ball through the air, Brez did pretty good tonight. Did some work through the air, 114, did throw for two touchdowns, including one to Brogan Castillo there in the fourth quarter. Garrett Rodenberger completed his only pass by throwing a 37-yard touchdown on the night. Catching the football, TJ Kellemeyer <clears throat> with one catch, one yard. Uh, Wright had... One catch for 21 yards. Garrett Rodenberger had two snags for 40. So threw a touchdown, caught a touchdown, had some decent yardage tonight. Brady Borton had two catches, 12 yards. Brogan Castillo, three catches, 27 yards, and a touchdown. Cohen Stockman, the big-time touchdown catch early on in the game. One catch, 37 yards, and a TD. And Anthony Wilder ends tonight with uh, three catches, 20 yards. Well, it all adds up to a... Uh Central Catholic win. They'll move on and play Mansfield Senior, who beat uh, Rocky River tonight. So that'll be a matchup with a location to be to determined, be determined yeah. later on in the week. Final score again here tonight, Irish 41, Bulldogs 26. We'll uh, get our uh, Steichman Automotive Group player of the game, and we'll wrap things up from uh, Gallagher Stadium next here on DC TV Sports.
Welcome back to uh, Gallagher Stadium. Central Catholic will win her tonight. Final, uh, final score 41-26 as we look at candidates for our Steichman Automotive Group player of the game. As uh, we'll uh, start, Brent, a uh, couple of guys that stood out for you for uh, Toledo Central Catholic. Yeah, I mean, you always got to look at I think he's going to be mentioned every time they play. This is going to be Jalen Watson, the receiver, at 85 yards tonight. Um, through the air also had a carry for 16 yards. I, I don't know if you could say much else about Tyler Morgan and how he played tonight. 140 yards is the second running back. Really didn't have a ton in the first half as he had 17 yards and a touchdown in the first half. Ended tonight with 140 and with three touchdowns. Played tremendously good. And then uh, Marquand Braswell, of course, their big running back, 116 yards. So you know, they got those guys. I think they're probably their every week guys, or at least it feels like that. I'll, I'll give a shout out to Preston Frizelda, yeah. the big time receiver, young kid, big and punter. Looks like a tight end, looks like a college punter, looks like an <laughs> NFL punter. So he can yeah. boot that football, and he's a young kid. So pretty neat to see, you know, a guy like that be a force on offense a little bit too, as well as a special teams ace. And for Defiance, uh, talk about some guys that uh, you thought stood out here tonight. I mean, you look at the. Brogan Castillo is every single game when he's on the field he sets the tone for the offense and you know was able to do it so again tonight by scoring a touchdown through the air having over 100 total yards of offense um I think Jordan Wright was a big player tonight had a big catch it seemed all three times he touched the ball you know turned it into sure. uh, first downs I think on all three touches so that was big for me I, mean, I think you could mention Joey Robinson every single game Brez played phenomenal as well tonight um Garrett Rodenberger through the touchdown pass that really just keyholed them in the first half to stay in that game by throwing that big pass to Cohen Stockman and then it was able to receive the big one here with coverage all over him you know to get right back in the game and defensively and tonight we saw him he was covering, all over we, we, we yeah. saw him covering uh all over the place I mean he was trying to he's sticking on Watson yeah, pretty he's trying good. to keep track of Watson he was making plays with tackles I mean Garrett Rodenberger is a is a ball player every single game and it is it's every single game both and, sides. Uh, and uh, that young man's going to deserve a, a nice pizza pie from Padrones and our friends at Steichman Automotive Group, Garrett Rodenberger, our Steichman Automotive Group player of the game. I want to say a, a big thanks to uh, Associate Athletic Director Mike Paget and everybody here at Central Catholic High School. They've been uh, tremendous helpful. Helpful. The IT guy even ran us our own uh, internet feed and all kinds of stuff. So I want to say a big thanks to everyone here at uh, Central Catholic High School. I want to say a big thanks to our uh, broadcast team as well, our yeah. production team uh, throughout the season. Jeff, Alex up here in the booth. Uh, Will. We got Zeke. We Shout got Tim. Out. Yeah, got we got uh, John, John, who is uh, our tech ninja. Yeah, he is. Um, John's he's John's a man of all rock things. Solid. Yeah. Everybody so, is the entire the entire crew is just awesome. Top we've notch. Twelve weeks, thirteen games. Twelve weeks, thirteen games. Had a couple there week one. Got to you know hang with our bulldogs a lot this year. I think that's what made you know we love seeing Ayersville. We love seeing Tenora. We love those county schools. But to see a good successful run from Defiance this year is always nice. So. Um, it's a great year. It's a phenomenal year. Great to be back doing it, and yeah. it was a blast doing it. Yeah. I'm glad you said yes when I saw yeah. you. I saw you at the like, softball like field. Like eight said, days yeah. before <laughs> it was supposed to start, yeah. you know. Hey, uh, you want to you throw it back and do it? Yeah, let's do it. Why not? Let's yeah. do it. Uh, again, give us a like and a subscribe here on yep. YouTube. Uh, go to our Facebook page, uh, Defiance Community Television. Make sure you're following us because we're going to be doing some uh, winter sports as well. We've got all kinds of great stuff coming on the DCTV sports side of things with uh, boys and girls basketball, wrestling. Hoop it uh, up. Maybe some swimming and diving, maybe some bowling. I don't know what we're going to do. Just... We're just going to throw it out there, and we're going to do what we can because we want these high school kids to have coverage uh, yeah. of what they're doing because it's, you know what, win lose or other or, or draw it's something special no matter what so there's no uh, doubt a big thanks to uh, everybody who has helped us get things going throughout this season it's been a great first season of live sports here on dc tv sports partner yeah it was awesome it's been fun a lot of fun we actually did one road trip to this year too yeah we did yeah yeah definitely did it wasn't kenton <laughs> yeah we said we said uh we wanted to try to avoid that wbl travel schedule it ain't the best if you know what i mean and we boy we took the top and went out to Cleveland. So, yeah, you know, and that was a good time. That it was, was a fun. fun night. Fun drive home, too, yeah. if you know what I'm saying. So, <laughs> uh, The Irish a winner tonight by a final score of 41-26, to 26, and they will move on to play Mansfield Senior next Friday night at a site to be determined. Yep. For Brent Routon, this is Josh Bush saying good night from Central Catholic High School. Have a great weekend, everybody.